Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Paul Trani here with the one and only Nathaniel Dodson. Day two in the house. Day two. How you feeling, buddy? I feel great. Right on. People loved you yesterday. I want to welcome everybody, Ash. Uh, we got Rob Zilla in the house. Good to see you here, Sandy Pan. Just uh, welcome Nathaniel for day two, otherwise known as Tut Vids. Tut, tut vid. Vids, Tut Vid. Toot vid. It, 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 well, like, the guy that makes Photoshop tutorials. Uh, my Uber driver yeah. last night watched my channel. I know. Like, I feel like Just everybody's. Like, hey, you're that guy. That's fun. That's I was awesome. like, what did I do? <laughs> as long as the police aren't being called yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, maybe it's me. Depends yeah. on what you're asking here. But uh, yeah. you can check out yesterday's uh, live stream. A lot the, of fundamentals we covered yesterday. Yeah. Which and we was put the fun back in worth fundamentals. A, worth a replay, like, for sure. Kind of dive into that. So. Uh, Andrew, good to have you here as well. Andrew, uh, Andrew's a regular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he knows his stuff too. So, uh, super happy to have you here and all this week on Adobe Live. Just so you know, we have you uh, for two hours right now. Big thank you to Howard who uh, kicked off the XD uh, Creative Challenge this morning. Uh, we have you for two hours. Hey, Seuss is going to be up. 11 to 1, Shauna Lynn Pancheson will be up from 1 to 3. All Photoshop, all day long, today, tomorrow, and a little XD thrown in there just for fun. And uh, that's what's happening. So hang out with us all day long. Well, you can't spell fun without XD, so. Yeah, I so don't know. So I've been told. Yeah, so we, we're designers. We don't know how to spell things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we do know we have uh, these daily challenges as well. We had one yesterday. We're going to reveal the winner here shortly. And uh, today is all about making a postcard for your home town or oh, really any that's place. That's going to be cool. We're probably not going to fact check that, but that's gonna make be a cool. postcard. Yeah, everybody lives in Paris today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Super fun. Tomorrow, day three is all about portfolio reviews, which is also really fun. Roll that into uh, your Behance portfolio and we will review some of those as well uh, be tomorrow. Good time. It's going to be a blast. Oh yeah. So good to have you here from Florida. Always buenos dias. Dagny buenos dias. as well. And uh, yeah. We'll dive into this, if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Shall we do this? Let's get the party started. <laughs> Keep the analogies coming. This is there. actually from Ski. yesterday. Shout out from Ski yesterday. Ski mask and gas, Paul Alvarez. Uh, yeah, so this yes. is from yesterday. We covered, yesterday we covered a lot of the basic stuff that you're gonna need to know in Photoshop, particularly as a photographer. The essence of the day was just Photoshop for photographers is creating selections and containing effects within that selection. You wanna change the color of somebody's hair, mm -hmm. you make a selection of their hair, you apply an effect, and you mask it within the hair. Oh yeah. It's, that's kind of the essence. You wanna make the sky more blue, you select the sky, you make it more blue with a color effect. You wanna sharpen the photo, do you wanna sharpen the entire thing, in which case you need no selection, but you wanna sharpen somebody's face. You make a selection of the face area, so on and so forth. I think you get the point. Um, and this is one of the things we did where we created like a very realistic, um, sky, sun, well, sun in the sky. It's not really much of a sky there. And then we applied some color toning, a color treatment effect to really warm up the photo, add a little bit of those like deep cyan and blues, that Hollywood effect. The essence of the Hollywood effect is the blue teal in the shadow and the orangey colors in the highlights. It just works really well with virtually every skin tone. Uh, just don't go too overboard with it, but mm -hmm. done subtly, done well. Um, it's nice. In fact, I would say it's a little, a little strong in this photo, but just to give you an example here, there's before and there's after. So yeah. you can see what we added to the photo, the blowing out the sun back there and just kind of creating that toning effect. So yeah, uh, Reap, you know. check out the replays tab. You could watch watch that video. I'm sure some of these, some of the things you did maybe yesterday might reemerge today yes. as well, because yeah. it's a lot about And we're gonna kick it up for a couple notches. And, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna spice things up a little bit. And, and by the way, we're, we are kind of targeting beginners overall, yep. but even me as, Someone's been working in Photoshop a while. I've learned plenty from you yesterday. So we, I think we have something for everybody. Would well, you I learned agree? I from you too, Paul. Well, you learn what not to do from me is really what's happening. <laughs> I wasn't going to be the so. one to say it. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So w the part of today, it's everything that I'm doing, uh, there, I'm going to be using the more basic the more basic ways to do a lot of stuff. Maybe not exactly the way I would do it in a real commercial application, let's say, but stuff that hopefully you can jump in and do right away. Um, and if it's stuff that you feel like you can't do, I want it to be something that's cool enough that you could dream of doing it. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're gonna be creating today. Uh, we're gonna be making this effect and just kind of everything you see here in the photo. Um, so it's gonna be a bunch of fun. We're gonna cover a whole lot, a lot of stuff. 
And I guess we can get started right now, right? Why yeah. Don't hold me back. Might as well just <clears throat> dive so, in. So, we're going to kick the whole thing off here with a good old Adobe stock photo. One of my favorite photos of the San Francisco skyline. And... Uh, oh, let me figure out where this is. Where, yeah, this yeah, had to have been... No, where I'm trying to think of like... Because I know, I know <laughs> San Francisco very well. This had to have been taken from a balloon oh, or yes. something. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that had to have been taken from... Yeah, I was thinking... I don't think there's any tower that, on the side That might of town. be, like, the Hilton might be, like, that building right this, there. This building? Yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> it's a little tall for the Hilton, I think. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, we're going to begin with this photo of San Francisco, and we're going to... Well, we need to make it look like a background. If we just drop something in the foreground of this photo and keep it super sharp, it's not going to look very realistic. I mean, let's go back to this photo. See how the background's all blurry? It looks all nice and silky smooth. Got lots of bokeh, or some people would say bokey, going on back there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select the background. We'll go filter. We're going to say blur gallery, and we're going to choose the field blur. Now, here in the field blur, the cool thing about field blur, you can apply a bunch of different points, change the level of the blur at different points in your image. I'm not interested in that. One straight center pin for my field blur. If you can see it right there. Um, it's just gonna blur the entire image very uniformly. The thing that I'm most interested in is this stuff down here, the effects tab, particularly the bokeh, light bokeh and bokeh color. So I'm gonna set light bokeh to, I gotta, I gotta use my, my trackpad here. Uh, I'm gonna set this to maybe 40. And you can see how it's really blowing out the highlights, right? It's doing bad things to the photo. But we're starting to get a relatively realistic, out of focus background. And then I'm gonna pump bokeh color up to 100. So now you can see how this really brings out all those little, the rings of light that you would uh, traditionally see an aperture of a camera made. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I mean, this is this this is different from uh, Gaussian blur, which is people yes. are used to. Yeah, so it, you're, it's blowing out these. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's and it's artificially creating. It's it's I, what I'm assuming Photoshop is doing is detecting those very very bright points and saying, look, as I blur this, it need we need to create that little bokeh effect. Mm -hmm. uh, which a normal blur is not going to do. And then we're going to limit the light range. And what that's going to do is really help us contain this fiery, molten lava looking sky. <laughs> so I'm going to set this to like, uh, I don't know, 230, something like that. So I pushed it down. Not okay. perfect, but it's good enough. The problem is if you keep pushing the light range over, we're also going to begin losing the bokeh here in the foreground. Oh. So I'm kind of, you're doing the dance here. How much of the sky do I need to make sure is still there? Uh, versus how much the foreground is going to be blurred. It's just really uh, a feature of this image because there's so much dynamic range in this image. Depending on your photo, you, you'll see varying results. Uh, but overall, it's just a really, really cool effect. And one thing I may try to do is push the field blur up from 15 pixels to 20 pixels. I think that's more like, um, that's more like what I want. And then up here, I simply hit OK. And then Photoshop's going to do its thing. Voila. Now, I didn't use a smart object. This is a purely destructive effect um, because smart objects are a whole different thing. Smart objects are a little complex, frankly, but they're super powerful. You should definitely learn about them, but a different day, learn about them. That's the Transamerica Tower, Jan Eric, by the way. Yes, the, the pyramid. Um, it's a very unique building. Yes, it's very cool. Speaking of cool things, by the way, can I just... Yeah, yeah. Can Break we... In uh, I just uh, wanted to do this real fast because we have our winner from yesterday. Do you oh, mind if we dive oh. in and show this? Yeah, go for it. I have to do this. You can see right here, congratulations <laughs> to Chelsea Skinner. She is our winner from, from yesterday. From Tuscaloosa. All about creating a surrealistic scene. And uh, yeah, this was... It was super fun, <laughs> yeah. right? This is like good times. Like, I mean, if you if you pull up to the bar and that's your bartender, you, you've already had too much to drink at that point. You know, I was I was happening. in downtown yesterday <laughs> and a bunch of pigeons landed on my hands. I, a guy handed me a bunch of seed, and I, I got it on video. Like I filmed the whole thing, holding all these pigeons wow. eating out of my hands. Not a squirrel, but I had some pigeons uh, in the vicinity. That's that's wild. I can't wait to see your you're kind of doing a, a vlog as well. So you're gonna have to let everybody know because I think we, I'm gonna see all this footage that uh, you've I, been taking the past I couple agree. days. Agree. I'm excited to see how it, it turns out as well. But uh, thank you so much, <laughs> Chelsea. Did a great job. Thank you, everyone. We wish we could pick more, but 
you know. So very cool idea too, so Chelsea. Very cool idea. Yeah, super fun. I don't know if she's here, but congratulations. She wins one year of Creative Cloud. And oh. by the way, oh. uh, I would have loved to say your name. Uh, you know, I'm sure you wanted me too, but there's the contest today happening under the challenge tab all about creating postcard. And if, so. depending on how much you comment, if the comments are interesting, we'll say your name anyway. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Like Heidi, bar nuts are the best at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so <right>. clever. <laughs> Into it. <laughs> All right, man. All right, back to Photoshop we go. All right, so uh, we need a platform upon which our subject will be standing or running. We're gonna drag this dark textured concrete stock photo, and I really like the floor. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. You can see how it's not quite centered in the document. I just kind of roughly dragged it in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull the corners and just stretch it out. But the new, uh, the new, transform feature in Photoshop, it automatically is gonna scale proportionally, which usually is a good thing. Right now I don't want it, so I'm gonna hold down Shift to release that, and I'm gonna pull the left side over, and then I'm gonna hold down Shift, and I'm gonna pull the right side over. And you can see here we've got a nice floor for our foreground. I'll hit the little check icon to commit the change, and maybe we'll zoom it in a little bit here. And uh, well, we need to get rid of all of this stuff so we can see the city again. I know I just zoomed in, I do this all the time. I zoom in, I zoom out. I'm just trying to take a look here. I'm gonna grab the rectangular marquee tool and I'm gonna drag a selection down and just get it kind of roughly as close to that, you know, sort of the, the butt of the wall, the butt, the crotch, you know, all that, that whole area right there of the wall. There's no real good way to say it, sadly. <laughs> uh, but once you have the selection, we do wanna give it a little bit of blur. And the way we're gonna do that is by feathering the selection. So we go select, modify, feather. And I'll show you what this does if you're, if you're unfamiliar with this. We only need a little bit, just a kiss, five pixels. We'll hit okay. And then what I'm gonna do, you see I've got uh, I've got my stock photo here. It's got the little cloud icon, which means that it's, it's still connected to the Adobe, uh, or, or it's essentially a live object, kind of a smart object, still connected there through uh, Adobe stock. I don't want that. I want this to be a purely rasterized image, a piece of artwork that I can push the pixels around. I can mess it up if I want. So I'm gonna right click on the layer and choose to rasterize the layer right there. Rasterize that layer. There we go. And now that we've done this, we're gonna go layer, new layer, and choose new layer via cut. And what this is gonna do here is split this image into two different layers. I've so we've never got, done that. We've got our floor down Just there. Saying. And we've got our, <laughs> our not floor there. And you can see now we've got the makings of a platform, what could be, some would say, a building top. All right, but I'm gonna take the smoky uh, top part here and we can use this too. Let's just uh, use the blend mode screen and see what that does for us. Mm. It's kind of interesting. I'm gonna introduce you to something here. It's called naming of the layers. And I'm going to begin naming because you're gonna see in a little bit, the layers are gonna start kind of piling up on us. So to be able to quickly get back and reference something or adjust something, it makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I will also double click on this and we can start playing with and I understand this is not incredibly basic, but basic enough. You're smart. We're gonna use this blend if slider. I'm gonna focus on this layer. What I'm looking to do is get rid of all the black pixels on this layer or hide mm. them or push them away. So I'm gonna alt click that splittable little arrow. See how it's got the line in it? That's basically uh -huh. Photoshop saying, hey, you can split me in half. So I'm gonna hold down alt, that's option on the Mac, click, it's gonna split it. And then I can grab that handle and pull it toward the middle and just begin to get rid of any anything that even comes close to not being our nice white dusty smoke, right? If I if I unpreview this, you can see there it is without blend if, there it is with blend if. We just remove a lot of that haze, keep the clarity of your image. You don't want mm. you don't want your composite, your photos to look like you're just slapping effect after effect on and just blasting all this color and low contrast light at your image. Just kind of kills it a little bit. So Fascinating. We're, we're gonna that, hit okay. That's, that's really cool, by the way. Yeah, I mean, we'll it clean really it up is, a little bit. Yeah, totally pulls that out. Now, what happened? Remember, I told you I told uh, I would tell you what the feather did. See how the edge of the roof almost fades seamlessly into the blurry background. Mm -hmm. The feather allowed us to get that blurry edge because it's taking that very sharp edge selection and just whoop, mm. blurring that. But before we even make a selection, it's saying if I select anything here. We're gonna just select a lot here and fade it to nothing to give you just a perfect, beautiful, soft selection. But part of the uh, effect of that is we get this really nasty, dark line here with our, our smoke. We don't want that, not very realistic. All we need to do is grab your, your move tool up here, the selection arrow, right? Select that layer, 
and hit your down arrow key a few times until it goes away. So just like that, perfect. And there we have it. A nice, perfect scene, ready to accept a couple other elements, and then our model, and then begins the process of other stuff. Mm -hmm. You'll see when we get to it. All right, so uh, now that we've done this, I think the ground could use a little bit more saturation. So let's go back and use an adjustment layer like we talked about yesterday. We're going to apply a vibrance adjustment layer and we're gonna talk about the clipping mask again, which we talked about yesterday. It basically allows you to constrain or contain this adjustment layer within a single layer. So right now, if I take this and I boost the saturation, look, it's doing bad, bad things mm -hmm. to my sky, my skyline, everything. I'm gonna hit the little reset button here and I only want this to target, well, not even the smoke. I want it to target this concrete floor. So we're gonna drag the vibrance down. We're gonna hold down alter option and when we see the little icon appear, click. Now when I boost saturation, which I will, to about 50, 60, maybe 70% or plus 60%, uh, you can see there, all it's doing, that little bit of blue. Can you see that in the floor? This is just becoming a little more blue, matching the blues and what we see here in the mid ground of our skyline. All right, so let's, um, let's. And by the way, I just, I, I don't want to like overlook clipping masks, by the way, which are like fantastic. So use them I, some, all the time. some people may or may not, like if you don't know of them, you should. Yeah. It's another mask. Would you say you use probably layer masks? Layer masks, number one. But the thing about clipping masks is they do something that nothing else does. Um, in, in, well, I shouldn't say that. The, the speed and the way in which they do them, nothing else does. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just stuff you Super do with them. Super easy. Um, yeah. And just can you like zoom in on that or do it? Yeah, Sorry. sure. Just, just so clipping people mask. know. That yeah, right there, that little know. bump down arrow, that means that the vibrance layer is being clipped to this layer beneath it, mm -hmm. which means that when I adjust the saturation from here, it is only going to attack this concrete floor. It doesn't touch mm -hmm. our background. We preserve all the beauty, all the wonderful colors, tones, light, everything in that background. We're only messing around with the concrete floor. That's it. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Really, and really uh, for you pros out there, you could actually like, you might get into this. You could have a, a, a layer group. So you could have a folder yep. and a We're clipping gonna do it later. Map. Okay, yep. I won't. We're gonna, you anything. can clip the <laughs> entire group of layers. Which is but fantastic. You'll see it, yeah. Oh, it's awesome. And you're gonna see why it's gonna save us a big mess in the layers panel. For those of you, I saw somebody saying they're a neat uh -huh. freak. For those of you that are neat freaks, it'll save you a ton of mess. It just looks better mm -hmm. and it saves time as well. Very cool. All right, so let's go on here and drag in a fence. So I've got this seamless fence document here. And I'm just gonna commit the change. And I think the size that it is, is a little low. So we could do a couple things. We could hit Command or Control T, which by the way, Command or Control T is the same as going Edit Free Transform. Um, we could either make it bigger and taller because up on this rooftop, it really should be a bit taller. Uh, or we could make it kind of short and stack it. I think for the sake mm -hmm. of saving time, I'm just gonna make it one tall fence. Mm -hmm. Kind of sort of like that. And then I'll pull it over this way. Maybe I'll put it right there. And then I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option, right? I'm using my black arrow, my move tool. Hold down Alt or Option and drag a copy of it out and hold Shift while dragging the copy. And I can drag it right over and it'll snap into place as long as view snapping is turned on. It'll snap right into place. You can see it's off by like a pixel. So that's not Photoshop's problem. That's whoever set up the stock photo. They were close, but you know, one pixel off is one pixel off. There we go. So I just nudge it back with the, uh, with the black arrow tool. And there we have it, we have our fence. Um, I can hold down shift, select both of these fence layers over in the layers panel, hit command or control E to mask uh, to merge them together. I'm gonna double click, I'm gonna name the layer fence. Now this is gonna be a long process of masking. We have to go in with the brush tool and we gotta dot every single chain link thing. Well, this or is... we can just <laughs> use something like the multiply blend mode, yeah. which is far faster, far more effective. Yeah. And the beauty really <laughs> of a dark object like that on a white background. Did I scare you? No, I, yeah, uh, I was like, okay, we're gonna was, be here a while. You know, we only have two hours. That's what we're I was gonna spend to most of it <laughs> that makes working me on the fence. All right, so there we go. Move the fence down. We probably don't want it right at the edge of the floor or our platform, but we want it kind of close. So we'll see, like, right about there. It probably looks right. Something like that. And at this point, too, you can reduce the opacity a little bit if it needs to be reduced. Yeah, I'll push down 75, maybe 80% gonna allow it to inherit more of that ambient color coming from the city behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool. 
Now, in order to make the fence look a little more realistic, uh, this time I'm actually for real gonna zoom in, uh, we need to have something going on down here at the base. Typically, you're gonna have a shadow, some cracking, some things like that. We're not gonna go overboard. You could make a little pot, you know, like a hole that was drilled into the concrete and then filler was put in around it. We're just gonna put a shadow. It's gonna do a good enough job for us. So I'm gonna select the smoke layer here. I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna name it fence underscore shadow and I'm gonna grab my brush tool here. I appreciate you naming layers. I have a giant, I have a giant brush. I'll right click and we'll set this to like, I don't know, let's try 100 pixels, see what that looks like. Yeah, 100 will probably work. But if we create a shadow like this, that perfect circle, it's gonna look really bad. So we're gonna use this little br brush smusher tool and just make our brush a little mm -hmm. bit more what we would expect to see in perspective here. So I'm gonna hit my flip flop foreground background colors and I'll click once. Maybe I'll click twice, something like that. Okay, I'll move over to the next fence post. Maybe once there, because it's a little bit brighter, right? Where you have more light, the shadow is going to be a little weaker. Just like that. And we can select the fence shadow and reduce opacity a little bit if we feel the need. Whatever needs to be done to just blend it in a little bit and make the whole thing look uh -huh. a little bit more realistic. Right, so something kind of like that. And you can see a couple little dumb blobs of black soft paint on a canvas like this, it really makes all the difference in the world mm -hmm. because now it's beginning to look like it fits. So I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm kind of happy about that. I'm just, I'm glad you're thinking safety first by adding the fence, hey, so you, thank you for that. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, here at Adobe, we strive to set a good example for, for all the people in the world. All right, I'm gonna drag my, my subject into the photo. So again, it's another stock photo. Uh, it's this woman in this running position uh, I'm actually gonna make her a little bit smaller. We can make her a little bit bigger in a little bit. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna make her smaller just to make this selection. And by the way, because it's still attached, I can always hit Command or Control T, bring up Free Transform, and see this? It's not even scaled up to 100%. So I could make the image way bigger and it's not gonna get blurry. So that's a really cool little feature of, of something like that. Has to do with smart objects, but again, like I said, we're not really gonna get into smart objects today. All right, let's use some of the selection techniques we used yesterday. Let's go to that quick uh, select tool. Let's try select subject here. There we go, not bad. Let's zoom in and kind of examine it a little bit. And you can see back here on her, her back end, we've got some picking up we gotta do mm. around there. Maybe we wanna catch the loop on the back of the shoe, some things like that, right? The laces, clean up the shadow issue. So I'm gonna make my brush tool a little bit smaller here. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option. See, it's gonna flip the plus to a minus. That's the Paint Away Selection feature. And I'll just play around with this edge until I kind of get something that's close to what I want. That's close enough. And I'm just gonna look here, here uh, on the back of her shorts. We're gonna just add this. Voila. Wonderful. I'll come up here, the back of her, her running shirt. There we go, we add that. So you can see Select and Mask or I'm sorry, uh, select subject. We're gonna be in select a mask in a moment. Select subject did a nice job for us here. And we just, you know, come in and tweak and adjust, refine, refine, refine. There we go. Let's maybe clean up that little edge. All right, great. Now that we have um, a rough approximation of our selection. Do you think the uh, photographer had her balance on her toe? Like she's actually not running. The photographer is like- I bet you the way I they shot you. it was probably had a block, like a, a triangular block under her foot. Oh, maybe. Something mm, like that. Interesting. It could have been something like that. Or just stand in the position, raise up on one toe and do it 200 times and you're gonna get, you'll get a good shot yeah. eventually. Well, at least Thank you. you better. Yeah, and thanks for all the suggestions um, in chat. Nice. Uh, yeah, she is, you could say that she's Russian. Uh, anyways, yes. I'm making a joke <laughs> here. She's uh, Russian. But nonetheless, sorry, I can't and, read that. And when the race but, yeah, is over, she'll be finished. Are, people are, yeah, we'll, we'll, I think we'll work on this. I think the shadows and like, you're gonna take clues from oh, yeah. the we, fence versus like her and like how all that ties together. We've, in got, the we've got a lot that's we got coming work, up. We, we got, got some a work lot, to do. a lot, a lot that's coming also, up. Also, what's coming up in less than five minutes, we're gonna do <clears> chat and win, just so you know. We're gonna give you something away. Cool. And that's it. So. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit select and mask here. Bam. And you can do a few things here. You can say, uh, give me marching ants, give me the onion skin, which is gonna kind of show you in context where we're placing her, uh, what she looks like and what the edges are gonna look like. I think that's kind of what I want. I love that they call that marching ants, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that kind of fun? I mean, it's that's kinda, always a slang it's, term. It's but... sort of apropos. Yeah. Right? It, it, it certainly, whoever originally came up with that back in the back in the early days yeah. of Photoshop. I was like, All oh. right, we're gonna, we're gonna grab the refine edge brush here. I'll right click. Well, 
and I will choose a much smaller brush, something like so. And I'm gonna try to pick up that the back loop-de-loop -loop lace there. See, look at look at how mm -hmm. Select and Mask just picks that right out. Let's clean up around the laces there. Ba boom, very nice. And we'll just keep cycling around like between the fingers here. Clear that out. The next finger, the next finger, the top edge here. Boom. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see we got a little like Skeletor action happening there. Mm -hmm. So we'll grab the brush tool here, make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to manually go in there and say, yeah, I kind of I kind of want that highlight back because it's part of her wrist mm -hmm. or part of her knuckles or whatever. She appreciates having it back. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine. And even here along this good. edge. Well, you know what? No, I don't want to do that. I'm just, I tried, I tried to, I doubted select a mask for a second and I regretted it immediately. I'm just going to try to smooth that transition there with the brush. All right, and then here for the hair, we go back to the refine edge brush. Use my square bracket keys. You can press the left one to make the brush smaller, the right one to make it bigger. Am I doing that right? Yeah, the left one smaller, the right one bigger. It's like muscle memory. So it's it's hard to explain sometimes what it does. And hopefully but... everybody gets the power here. Like you almost need to pause just so everybody like sees what we we did. Did we do this yesterday? No, we, we didn't. didn't. We didn't. So we if didn't this is out. new to you, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> It's right. The, and select a mask is one of those features that when it first came out, I really did not like it, but it's gotten so much better over just the past 18 months. Yeah. It's really incredible. So, and I'm sure it's going to keep getting better and better and better. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a sight to behold. And the first few times you see it just perfectly select a head of hair or, you know, get, get a, some complex like, how edge would you're working do on. That? I was trying to think, how did we do this before? I mean, like, channel-based selections were pretty powerful, but you still had to go in and do a lot of edge work. A, a lot of times you still have to do some edge work here, but not like you had to do before. Yeah. Um, it was it was just very, very difficult. In fact, um, I had it one of the NFL playoff games on the other day, and they have the players' heads pop up, and they all have this glow around their hair. Like, does it? Don't use... Mm. You select a mask, you'd be perfect. Oh, That's exactly yeah. what you wanted it's for. Distracting, you just get rid of the, the little <laughs> outline. Well, you can tell it's kind of like, the, you know, it's a selection yeah. that could have been done better with select a mask. Uh -huh. I'll put it to you that way. <laughs> so we can just run over this. I'm gonna check this shoe. See, we've got some uh, some shoelace action happening there. Look at that. Just bring it all right back into place. Love it. And then down here is gonna be a little difficult because there is that shadow on the ground, but we're gonna build a shadow as well as reutilize that shadow. So I'm just gonna kind of. I'll, I'll, I don't mind if a little bit of it's there. So there we go. I am, I'm gonna now output this as a layer mask. Uh, you have a bunch of great features, by the way, these global refinements for a lot of different features, uh, for a lot of different applications, I should say. Okay. These features can be really good. Selecting objects with straight, long, crisp lines, a little feathering and a little contrast added will back that thing right up and get you really, really nice, clean selections. And anyway, I love this. Well, I just, I like outputting to yeah. exactly what you New layer here. with layer mask. We're just gonna go layer mask on this layer though, because we don't need a second copy of it. Um, actually, I'm gonna go new layer with layer mask because we do need a second copy of it. Okay. I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see, there we go. We've outputted her on a new layer with layer mask. And oh, by the way, just like a little user experience, they just shut off the original layer. It's a little thing, but it's something that if every time you oh. got out of select the mask and had to shut off the layer, I guess I didn't it would realize. just get annoying. Yeah, totally. Like that's the UX team. And yeah. I appreciate yes. that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna call this model underscore, if I can spell, model underscore ref for reference. And then up here, I'm gonna call this just model or subject or whatever you wanna call it. All right, great. I'm gonna select uh, this right now. Actually, I am gonna turn the original layer on. We're gonna hold down shift and select both. Remember I said we were gonna scale it back upward a little bit. I wanna do that together. The reason that I'm saving the original image is because I wanna scalp out that shadow. And I think it'll just be easier if everyone sees that cut out of the full image. So I'll quickly just command or control T and I'm just gonna drag this and make her a little bit bigger, just like so. I'm gonna nudge her down to about where I think she'll be and commit that change. And I'm gonna let this roll right into our next segment. I'm into it, and that's what this means. Fireworks, it means it's time for chat and win. We're gonna dive into it right now. Welcome back, everybody. And what that means, you just need to say something in chat, preferably something very kind and, uh, I don't know. Profound. Profound. This comment we will go to go heaven. 
That was very, <laughs> that was the best comment ever. <laughs> uh, I, I forget who said it, but nonetheless, we see lots happening in chat. Say something profound, deep and meaningful, and uh, you could potentially win. We'll just pick a name at random. We mainly need to make sure there's a human at the other end of that uh, keyboard if we say your name. And don't blame me, because I'm not doing the picking. Yeah, exactly. I would um, like I I would like to think I would, but I'm not doing the picking either. So I would, don't get me wrong, I would love to do the picking. Yeah, I would love to be bribed to like <laughs> with more than what the prize is worth. <laughs> Speaking of the prize, by the way, stickers. You're gonna get a hundred stickers uh, for free uh, if your name is called. And congratulations to Yurko Medina. Congratulations, Yurko Medina. You are the proud winner of. 100 stickers from Sticker Mule, which is the fast and easiest way to buy custom stickers that you can design yourself in Illustrator. So, or the, the, the 100 stickers they win, they're stickers that they design that they, and upload. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. You get, your, you get your logo about. printed out, you could do your face, exactly. put it all over your parents' bedroom walls. Um, hopefully you're catching some, I don't know if you're reading some of these comments, some profound ones in there, so thank you so much. Uh, by the way, here's also just a URL where you can get 10 custom stickers for a buck, which is pretty much like free. Um, so that's what that you And sticker mule stickers that's are for awesome. everyone. It's not your dollar store stickers. Yeah. They're, you feel like you can't, you, you won't want to, wanna you won't want to stick them on anything once you get them. I'm that's the it. problem with them is they're so nice. All right, back to what we were working on. So we just scaled this upward, made it a little bit bigger, so it's gonna fit our scene. Um, I do have this where the where the wall meets the floor, and if you remember, the wall met the floor for our ground, like out over here. That being said, I don't think we're gonna stick with that. Um, we're kind of out of context enough with our images that I don't think you're really gonna notice the, the difference in height perspective as much, unless it was like crazy. Because there's sometimes where the perspective of the camera is so far different than the scene into which you're trying to move an image that there's not really much you can do to make it appear, right? Like Photoshop can't, there's there's a, that funny meme where there's an elephant looking one way and it says the, the client asked me to make the elephant turn around. Photoshop can't do that. It can't invent what's not mm. what's not there. It needs something to work with. So you would just get two two rear ends of the elephant if you did something like mm -hmm. uh, Content Aware Fill. Um, so so we're not too terribly concerned with that. I think this is going to be pretty good uh, where it is. Maybe you know maybe I'll move it down a little lower. So I'll select both layers. I'm just going to nudge it downward a little bit. Maybe something like that. That should be good. I'm going to shut off the model ref version because uh, we'll get back to that and create the shadow later. Looks really, really fake right now uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, and I saw somebody in the chat bring up some direction of light. Yes. Uh, the ground appears to have the light coming from this side. The model and the fence appear to have light coming from that side. Very easy fix here. And this is, by the way, not taking into consideration the background. I'm not terribly concerned about the background. With the low sun in the sky, you generally get what's called omnidirectional light, which is just a fancy word for saying it's it's just very soft light that's kind of coming from everywhere and going everywhere. It's not like the sun beaming down in one really harsh direction, giving you uh, incredibly strong shadows. Now, if the sun was out, not behind those clouds, you would have really, really heavy shadows. Um, so what we'll do here in order to fix a lot of our light problems, and it'll probably be the extent of the, the light direction matching we're gonna be doing for today, Let's take that concrete floor, Commander Control T, right click in here, and just choose to flip it horizontally, just like that. And you know what, I think I'm also gonna hold down Shift, and I'm gonna stretch the floor this way a little bit more, and nudge it over, well, I'm not gonna nudge it that far. I'll nudge it about like that, boom, and commit that change. So I think I like that, um, and I'll probably just stick with that. I'm gonna zoom out, I think I might wanna move her, whoop, ooh, hello. I keep going to hit my, my magnifying glass and accidentally undoing everything. Hmm. I'm gonna select her again, select both those uh, layers, and I'm gonna drag her over right about What's your shortcut key for the magnifying there. glass? Uh, Control Z. You can set it to anything Dude, with the app. Dude, I set mine to Option Z. I have the very same thing. Uh oh, option I'm afraid, I'm a, I just know Control Z is never gonna be a hotkey for me in Photoshop. Because yeah. on the Mac, I'm using Command Z as like my undo for the, for wow. the Windows users out there. Like, Control, you don't use Control Z? I use Command Z. <laughs> and that's called, I think it's called Zoom It. Is that what that's called? Uh, yes, Zoom It. Zoom, Zoom It is how it's magnifying. It's great. It's an awesome little app. I use it 
pretty much every day. Sometimes I find myself even using if I just want to take a closer look at something. And as a photographer too, it's like a digital loop. Mm -hmm. So even when you're looking at other people's photos and you want to see something, you can just zoom right in and check out this edge or that color or and, whatever uh, it may be. Do you ever uh, do you ever use the built-in accessibility zooming option? I've, I've tried it, but I can't. It's I just can't get used nice. to it. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of, because you can kind of like work without things okay. moving around. Yeah, that's true. And maybe I'll have to try out the the accessibility. I mean, I have tried it out and just never really, really. Yeah, no, I mean, dug it. it's not broken either. For All right, so. Design. The next technique we're gonna do, I actually have to kind of give a shout out to Jesus, the guy who's coming on after me. Um, a while ago, I don't know how long ago, it might have been a year ago, it might have been five years ago, he did a video um, and he shares sort of this technique. I've adapted it a little bit to how I work, um, but I picked it up from that video and I've been using it for at least a year, maybe two at this point. It's a great way to go ahead and match up uh, an image like this because we can tell a couple things about her. At least I can right off the bat. A, she's too dark. B, she's too green. Um, and C, probably a little bit too saturated as well, but the saturation is pretty close. So when adding one image or cutting an image from a place and compositing it into another place, we, we wanna target matching the brightness, the saturation, and then the color. And there's a way that we can break those three things down. I used to kinda, I had this very intricate, eyedropper thing I used to do and try to use curves and color balance and all these adjustment layers. But this way really breaks it down, makes it pretty simple. We're gonna first add a black and white uh, adjustment layer here. And one of the things that this is gonna do is it's gonna begin eliminating distractions, i.e. all the color. Because all we're interested in right now is the brightness, the luminance values. Mm -hmm. And right off the bat, we can kind of tell immediately she appears quite a bit darker yeah. than the rest of uh, than the rest I of this love image. This. I think um, Aaron Nace also, Flurn, talks about doing the same thing. Sort of like you're removing distractions. Right. All the stuff and let yeah. you focus. It helps like, you see with so much more clarity. For anything, if you're drawing yep. something, like you need yep. to approach it. Or if it you're forward. working in Photoshop, hit tab, remove all the distractions, mm -hmm. right? You just get rid of all that stuff. Um, so there's uh, anytime you can do that, particularly with an image that's complex. And when we have a lot of colors, we've got at least four layers going on now. We've got stuff that's in focus, stuff that's out of focus, stuff that's a mess, uh, this this will be good for us. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna grab our info panel and I'm gonna stash it right over here because this is gonna be of some value to us with what we're about to do. Another thing that we wanna consider is, well, let me start the process because it'll make sense as I start the process. Let's go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer. I'm gonna collapse adjustments here. So with the levels adjustment layer, we can hold down our Alt or Option key as we drag the black slider in or the white slider in. And what this is gonna do with the black slider is it's going to show me the darkest parts of my image. So I can see here those really dark parts, that's the side of her hair and both of her shoes. If I drag a little further, kind of here in her shorts, like that's the darkest part of the image, right in there in her shorts. Now, you may be saying it's not the darkest part, her hair and the shoes are. Well. What we're working with here, if we go back to the original photo, this particular scene has a lot of light coming down from the top, like most scenes, but it's an omnidirectional light. The light's everywhere. So when you have light like this that's very soft, it generally speaking is going to do most of its work in terms of lighting somebody or something up, not in something really dark like a black or very dark gray shoe. That's a bad sample point. You don't wanna use something like that as the darkest point in your image. It doesn't work as well. Something up here like the side of her, her little short, that's much better. And you'll see we're gonna do the same thing when we try to find a bright point in the photo where we don't just wanna say, oh, right there to the white point. We wanna find something that's a moderate, semi-diffused highlight. It just, I've found it just works better. So let's, let's check it out again. Hold down Alter Option and pull inward. So we're gonna see it, oh, well, it helps to turn the adjustment layer on. I'm a professional, guys. Hold down Alter Option and pull it in. So we know the side of the short is the darkest part of her. And then the darkest part of the San Francisco scene is back here behind this part of the chain link fence. Do you see that? Do you see how that works? Let me try it again. See, see, we know that's just chain link fence right now and it starts to get filled in. So that's the darkest part of the scene, all right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna select our black and white adjustment layer here. We can actually, uh, I don't wanna delete levels yet. We're gonna select the black and white adjustment layer. I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna drop a sampling point down here on that background. In fact, I'm gonna shut off the fence. 
I'm gonna drop a sampling point, boom, right down there. And I can probably turn the fence back on, and there we go, we're good to go. I'm also gonna hold down shift and drop a sampling point right around here, right around her hip. I wanna make sure that I'm not on like the highlight, but probably I don't have to go into like one of the deep, you know, wrinkles in her short. All right, so you can see what's happened. We have sampling point one giving us some information. Sampling point two giving us equally archaic, bizarre looking, unintelligible information. We're gonna make it intelligible in a second. Let's turn on levels again, select the levels layer. All right, so we got our shadows. We got our shadow point on her, shadow point on the background. We're gonna hold down alter option. We're gonna pull back on the white point and we're looking for brights in the scene. So again, I know that this is the ground. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this like this. I'm gonna shut off the ground and the fence. There we go, now we'll be able to really see and pick this out. All right, I'm gonna hold down alter option and we can see for the background, we start to get like all those lines across the middle, that's that really, really hot sky. I'm more interested in like this point right here, just above that, that's popping through. So we're gonna remember that and I'm gonna keep pulling it over until I see on her, right here on the back of her shirt, brightest point for her. All right, mm. we can delete the level, levels adjustment layer. We're gonna select the black and white adjustment layer. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna select one of these really light grays out here. Hold down shift again and select a really light point on the back of her shirt. Okay, we're doing good. I can shut off black and white. Actually, I'm gonna leave black and white on because again, eliminate the distractions. We still haven't done the lightness change. What I wanna do is over here in my info panel, we wanna click on the little eyedropper, see the arrow? And set this to grayscale. This is gonna give us the pure brightness value. Again, we okay. just want brightness and then grayscale. So we can see that the highlight in the background and the highlight in her, it's four, three, four percent off. We can adjust that. Let's check out the shadow here. So we're gonna I go mean, how many people even knew that gray there was scale, a little drop down there, by the way. Did you ever know there was a drop down there? I, I did mean, not know. I, I did, I mean, I, but I don't wanna know, say that I did. You know everything, but. I get it, but. <laughs> Fascinating. All right, so we're gonna adjust this by selecting our model layer, and I'm gonna open up adjustments, and we'll keep it simple, right? We'll just go with the levels adjustment here, collapse the adjustments panel. We do absolutely want to clip this to her. So Command Option G, that's Control Alt G on the PC. We got a clipping mask. All right, so now I want you to look at this. On one side, we have one number. On the, the other side, we have another number. The number on the left is the as sampled value. The number on the right is going to be the changed value. So as we change, remember number two and number four, those are our model. That's the object that we're moving into Photoshop. So we wanna kinda tone this down a little bit, get it down to about 93. So what I'll do is I'll come over here to the whites and if I push this back, I push it back, I can see, oh, I'm working, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm working with the highlights. I should be working with the shadows. Let me pull the black point up and I'm just gonna lift the black point and we can see now it's 93. It was 97. But now it's 93, and I compare it over here with our background, mm. background's 93. We're cooking with fire. All right, down here we got 37 and 25. So we're gonna try the same little trick here. I'm gonna push it over. It's given me, it's given me some different values here, but I'm just gonna ignore them. I know that I have to get to about 35-ish. Something like that should be good. If I go back to the black and white adjustment, uh, we, well, if I select the black and white adjustment, I should be good. Nope, it's still off. Let me continue adjusting here. I need to get it, oh, I need to get it up to like 23. I'm sorry, I'm moving it in the wrong direction. 25, that's probably good. I'm sorry, not shut off black and white. Select black and white. So there we go. Our background point, 93 and 23, and now for our subject, 93 and 24. Close enough, I'm not gonna spend all day working on it. We can delete the black and white adjustment layer. So if I shut off levels, that's what we had before, and this is what we have now. So we just lift the brightness of the image, and that, by the numbers, should be close enough uh, to make it look much more realistic, all right? Now, we have to do that with saturation. We have to also do it with overall color balance. The, the overall color balance, by the way, that's the Jesus Ramirez trick. Um, that's just a really, really good way to do it. But we'll get to that. Yeah, and hopefully everybody got that. Hopefully everybody understands what you're doing, right? You're obviously matching the foreground and background, uh, the intensity of the blacks and whites. Using the eyedropper, you yep. held down the shift key, right? I held down the alt, alt, or alt. alt or option for the Mac. So you hold down Alt, you drag the line over, or you drag the, the input slider over, and it's gonna give you a heads-up display of the darkest 
and then we drag the white slider over, it's gonna start to show you the absolute brightest parts of your image. Okay. And I just made a mental note of it where it was, and I dropped a sample point by shift clicking shift with the clicking. eyedropper there tool. There we go, okay. Perfect. And then I use the info panel to look at those points, one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, boom. And it's, it's good, because you can eye things all day long. These gives you right. exact numbers. Well, the problem, with eyeing, the problem with eyeing things, and I'm all for eyeing stuff, it can be, it's just really tough to get a good match and really, really, really make it work. Um, a lot of times you'll think it looks great and you'll come back the next day and be like, whoa, this has a huge green cast or a huge magenta cast or it's it's so blue. I, how did I not see how blue it was? Things like that. Yeah, so Derek, hopefully this does, the recap like helped as well. Because it could be kind of complex, but I like having these numbers. Right, no, I agree, I do too. It's, it's, it, it is a bit to swallow, mm -hmm. um, but I'd rather have them than not. Yeah. And it's the kind of thing where go you can watch the replay too and take a few notes. Once you do it like once or twice, you'll just kind of remember it. I don't know how else mm -hmm. to describe it. You'll just kind of remember how to do it. Um, by the way, in terms of like turning some of the black and white, which was a great technique, I've seen Aaron Nace call them check layers. Like you sometimes okay. have a layer yep. and it's just a black and white layer. You're yep. just, just checking. keeping an eye on things. Keep, yeah, you yep. just to check things out and then you can throw them away later, so. Yep. Absolutely. It really helps. All right, so the next technique we're gonna use is with a selective color adjustment layer. And this is something, I guess I would say a lot of photographers do it, but I don't think a lot do. It's something that photographers will use for all sorts of different things. It's called uh, creating a saturation mask. Um, and essentially what you do is add a selective color adjustment layer, and you have all of these color channels and then tonal uh, ranges that you can select. So with each of the color channels, you're gonna set the black slider to negative 100. So you're gonna do it with red, with yellow, with green, with cyans, with blue. You're taking all the black down? I'm taking the black down to negative 100. Magenta as well, black all the way down. All right, image looks bad, but we're, we're pushing something around. Then I'm gonna go to the tonal values, whites, neutrals, blacks, and I'm gonna boost the blacks to 100, all right? It's gonna end up giving us a black and white image. But what's happening here is, I'm gonna drag my properties back in and dock them. The, the least saturated parts of the photo are solid black. The more saturated the photo gets, the lighter it gets. So let me just show you, if I were to select her and like really, really desaturate her, let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer and really desaturate her, obviously we know that saturation is not gonna match with the background image. And sure enough, it's reflected in our saturation mask. By the way, you can get rid of all these points by just shift dragging them right off the image. It's gonna mm -hmm. dump them for you. They're a little distracting, right? We can tell just from our saturation mask, um, she, she obviously is gonna stick out. And sure enough, if I shut off the saturation mask, her saturation does not match the scene at all. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete hue saturation. What we're looking to do is make sure that she blends in. Now again, our absolute primary concern is not her dark shoes, which they're not brightly colored shoes. So we're not, we're not gonna try to force a bunch of saturation into an area that's not naturally saturated. So I can shut off the saturation mask and say, all right, her shirt's kind of gray, but gray will be influenced by the light around it. Her hair, her hair is pretty dark up here, which is probably why that's showing up so dark. There's just not a lot of color. And also over here where it's blown out solid white. White, there's just not color there, right? There's no hues. So we see all that. But the, the primary thing I'm concerned with is her skin tone, right? The skin tone looks a little light in the saturation mask. What does that mean? It means it's a little too saturated. So what I'm gonna do is click to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm actually gonna drag it above levels. And this is, think of this as the saturation correction that we're about to do. And I'm gonna grab my little finger scrubby scrub tool here. That's a technical term. Um, that is the, it's a very, very technical term. We're gonna select her skin right here on her thigh and click and just drag it until it gets dark enough that it kind of blends into the scene a little bit more. And, and by the way, the reason I'm using the scrubby tool is because see, we're, we're primarily attacking the reds and yellows in the photo, which is your skin tones for just about everybody fall within the red and yellow spectrum. That way we're not adjusting, you know, if she did have like pink shorts on or, you know, teal shoes or all sorts of crazy colors, you could just attack the one area that needs to be changed with the saturation adjustment. That is also why I'm using hue saturation to decrease saturation instead of like a vibrance adjustment layer. So just some, some food for thought there. So if I shut off my selective color, 
uh, saturation mask and I shut off use saturation. There it is before, there it is after. I don't know if you can see it. It's a yeah, it's very uh... subtle change, but it's in there. Before, after. See that we're just, we're just getting rid of some of that cast, right? You see that? Makes a difference. And it also, by the way, sets us up for a successful color treatment to help match the color a little bit more. I'm gonna delete my, my check layer, my selective mm -hmm. color layer there. Some people, by the way, save them. You absolutely can save them. Oh, there's a lot you can do with them. All right, I'm gonna add, you can do this with a, a solid color adjustment layer or a solid color layer, I should say, or you could just fill a layer. Uh, I fill it with 50% gray, right? And hit enter or return. And then I set it to the blend mode of luminosity, all right? Now, what are we looking at? It's, it's a little complex to describe what this is doing, but it's basically allowing us to see the differences in color of the underlying layers. That being, I said she had kind of a greenish color cast. I guess it's more yellow green, right? But there's definitely, wouldn't you say there's a little green action happening in there? Yeah. And there's a lot of, it. there's a lot of pink red in the sky. Well, remember the sky, that pink red is the dominant color that should be lighting most everything in the scene. If you wake up and catch the sunrise, the buildings in your city are going to be temporarily painted kind of a, a hue of orange yellow because the sun is sort of coloring them with its light. So armed with that information and the fact that her skin does not have a lot of that pink hue, pink salmony red hues, we're going to add another layer here. And I think to keep things simple, I usually use curves so we don't have to get into curves. I'm gonna go with a color balance adjustment layer here. We're gonna hold down alter option. We're gonna clip it to our stack so it's only hitting her. And we're gonna focus, we'll go first with the mid-tones. Let's push some red into the mid-tones. And look what it's doing. See how much more red it's making her? I'm not saying you need to make her this red, but I'm just giving you an example of what's happening here. And uh, we'll push a little red in there. I think we'll also push a little blue so she matches some of the ambient color coming off the city. Push some blue into there. And we'll go to shadows. This is where most of the work is gonna be done. Push a little red in there. I wanna push red, eh, a very little bit of red. I wanna push a little bit more blue in there. See how it almost feels like she's kind of disappearing into it. If I shut off color balance, there's what we started with. Here's where we are now. We've got a little bit too much magenta. Let me go to highlights real quick. I'm gonna push a little yellow into the highlights. A very little bit, very, very little bit. Maybe a little red, no, I don't really want red. Maybe a little cyan into the highlights. It's a labor of love. You're gonna slide back and forth. Color balance gives you a really visual way to do that though. Do I want red? Boom, I slide this this way. Do the shadows need more uh, magenta? Probably, so I could kick it over toward magenta a little bit if I can select it. And something like that, all right? Yeah, so just to kind of recap for Betty as well, like you're basically, you know, you're matching, you're trying to match the, you're matching the foreground with the background, yep. color-wise. And we're breaking it down. Our levels layer is adjusting for the brightness our hue saturation layer is adjusting the saturation of our subject, of the woman that's running. And the color balance layer is helping to match the color of the scene, all right? So now if we shut off our gray layer, now you can see what we have. There is wow. before color balance and there is after. Definitely notice it this time. So, right, so it's, it's something that makes a big, big difference. And really because I use color balance, um, I can try setting it to luminosity and see what that does. No, that's not gonna do what I want it to do. Normally with curves, you could use curves as like a luminosity type. Well, never mind. not luminosity. I'm, I'm thinking for brightness, not color. Uh, but you could go back in at this point with levels. You may need to adjust your levels. It's probably why you're, you're not gonna get rid of your eyedropper sample points because you need to go back. You'll need to adjust a little bit. Probably needs to be just a little bit brighter. So I'll just swing my midpoint. I am doing this by eye because I deleted my eyedropper points but you can just kind of have a little bit of fun with it and see what works for you. Uh, subtlety is really the key. A lot of little movements make a big change. Do you sometimes like try it a couple times? So you'll have a oh, couple co color balance Absolutely. layers and Be like And the, dif the difference or... comes from, you're always gonna select different points in the image. And sometimes the reason it's not working for you is because you selected a bad shadow point or a bad highlight point. And by the way, the more you do it, the more you'll begin to recognize a scene where, oh, I really need to focus on a very diffused highlight in this image, or it, with this interior photography photo, there's this piece of white china that's sitting over there. That would be the perfect point to sample from because it's not blown out, but it's just, it's gonna be the brightest point in all likelihood. And sure enough, it is, and it works great. Yeah, uh, Brianne just gave you the best compliment. Is she, she photoshopped, photoshopped into the scene? scene. Ah. Love it. Like that's what you're going for. Is like <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the, Brian, that. That is. The this goal. is what we we started with this image, and we're we're building all of this into it. That's where we are. Also, the bottom of the fence, a little low fidelity. I probably, if I did it again, I would like I did in the original. Probably do the double stack fence, just because a little smaller, a little mm -hmm. less, a little less detail to worry about. But we're going with the big fence here. We're yeah. gonna stick with it. 
All right, so that's really kind of a very, very quick 20 minute crash course on some of that blending. There's a lot, a lot that you can do with it. There's a lot of practice that you should do if you wanna get really good at it. Um, but those are the basic kind of tenets of it that if you really work at that and you adjust your eye and you refine, you know, everybody sees things a little bit differently. And uh, some people are just straight up better at it than other people. You may very well be better at this than I am when you get down and dirty and start working with it. I'm just a messenger. So I'm just gonna share the information yeah, and, and the ideas. And, and, and Yeah, and as a photographer, I think you've, I think you've, I mean, you sp you said, we were talking yesterday, you spent some time doing, and you still do photography. I think you're constantly like studying scenes. Yeah. Right, that's what made you good in Photoshop yeah. is the fact that you're a photographer, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you know how light needs to be treated and stuff like that. In right. Order to make it match. Yeah, and it's just something where the more you're behind the camera, you see it. Somebody said, are the fence posts supposed to be clear? You can see the color of the background through them. No, they're not. We did reduce the opacity um, just because we wanted to bring some of that color through. Again, mm -hmm. it's just a little creative decision for the composite. You're gonna see the way we're developing the composite while we're being a stickler about trying to get our colors and light and everything right. Um, absolute photorealism is not going to be the end result because we're going to have all kinds of, all kinds of, all kinds of going on. Yeah. It's going to be fun. So I believe, uh, well, let's actually, let's add one thing here to the foreground. That being a little more smoke. I got a stock photo of some smoke, right? You can get this kind of stuff. Adobe stock has a ton of it. I'll just drag it into here and I'll maybe pull it over this way. Hold down shift. I'll drag it out to the side, commit that. And uh, we'll just go ahead, I'll collapse my libraries again, collapse adjustments, and we'll just set this to something like screen, just like that. And at this point, because of all the colorizing we've done, I would probably even take it a step further and add like a color balance adjustment layer and clip it to just the smoke. So we'll call this smoke. And then I'm gonna call this color smoke. We'll double click on our color balance layer. For the most part, what we have left are highlights, and I probably try to make it a little bit more blue just to match mm. the scene a little better, right? It just kind of cools it down like the rest of the scene that's maybe a little bit too much blue. I'll add a couple drips of magenta. So something like that, voila. And again, you can reduce opacity if you want. She looks really fake at this point still because shadows do a lot. Remember with the fence posts, just adding the shadows was um, really, really helpful. And so, I think she's she still seems dark, kind of dark right now. Yeah, I mean, it's the color balance, you know, so we can we can pull up, we can pull up the shadows, we can adjust Yeah. to pull out some of that brightness. Yeah, that looks better. You know, as you Sorry. go through. No, 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 <laughs> hey, I, hey man. You two, have myself two, and- Two heads are better than one. So many. <laughs> right, so there's, there's what we started with. We have and here's where we are now. a thousand heads <laughs> right, helping right. us. <laughs> Screaming pixels, no smart object. I would be using a lot of smart objects, but we're trying to we're trying to do a complex project you're, and make it as beginner we friendly as possible. Object. I'm a very dumb object. This is the this is the <laughs> only smart object you need is this guy. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, let's turn on the original model here. And actually, I'm going to shut off the smoke for a second so we can see what we're working with. And I've got this shadow on the ground. I think we're going to try to grab it first. So we'll grab the elliptical marquee tool and drag a selection over it. Kind of, sort of, something like that. And then again, we'll feather this. Select, modify, feather. And I'm gonna do this kind of a bit, maybe 15. And we're just gonna pop this up onto a new layer, Command or Control J. I think I'm done with the original model reference, um, but I'm just gonna keep it there in case I need it. All right, so all the shadows we're gonna build just underneath the model layer. So there she is, masked in place. We're gonna start building up our shadows underneath of her. The shadow looks terrible right now because the shoe is funky and the, there's gray yeah, ground. You're too hard on yourself. <laughs> there's gray ground where there shouldn't be. But it be. is, it's, it almost looks green. Yeah, or so what we're gonna do is we really just wanna try to preserve as much of the dark stuff as possible. You might be saying, hey, a blend mode like multiply. Problem with multiply is it's gonna make like that entire oval area we selected really dark. It's another classic case. Select your layer. You can double click the layer. You can go layer, layer style, blending options and we're gonna to try to mess around with the blend if sliders. So what are we trying to get rid of here? We're trying to get rid of light pixels from this layer. So we're gonna look at the white slider for this layer. And again, I almost always split the handles unless it's an extreme case. And I'm gonna drag, 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 and there's before, there's after. It just helps blend it all in so much more nicely. I'm gonna hit okay to commit the change. And now we've got a bit of a shadow underneath her. We can turn the, the smoke back on. If you absolutely need to, you can go in and to add a little more realism, create a new layer. We're gonna call this guy Shadow 2. 
use the Roman numerals because, you know, the barrel makers used to use Roman numerals. That's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm going to take a brush and we still have our kind of flat shadowy brush. So I'll click maybe once, maybe twice, a couple times here. And as I'm looking, maybe I'll drag this above the model, right, to really get the shoe darkened in there, something like that. I'll go filter. I'm going to choose blur. I'm going to use a motion blur here. And I'm, so this means I'm just blurring linearly. Linearly. Is it linearly or linearly? I think it's Linny. linearly, right? It's linearly. I don't know. That's we're burning, too many we're, L's. We're, we're blurring straight across. <laughs> and I'm just going to blur it to just kind of stretch the edges, kind of like that. I don't know if you can see it, but it just gives you this very realistic, like, Blur in the middle with an interesting way that the pattern is created on both sides. It works really well with shadows for objects in general. I'll hit okay. There's too much shadow on the front side of her shoe. No problem. We just reduce the opacity a little bit and it'll blend together really nicely. I just really want the point at which her shoe is contacting the ground. I almost want it to be covered up a little bit. Oh, okay. Because when you get closer, especially to a darker piece of ground like this, you're not having that much light reflected up off the ground at you. So it probably doesn't look exactly like this in real life, but it's almost the illusion that your eyes see. You, you almost naturally expect there's a little bit of shadow where two objects run into each other. Uh, so it's a little bit of a trick we're going to play with people's eyes. And again, if it's too strong, you can always reduce it. So you can always take it down a little bit. And you could use blend if, right? Like if I was doing this for a client, I would probably blend if and just reduce the, the get, basically get rid of it from the white pixels of the underlying layer, which would be that rubber sole. Uh, but we're not gonna get into all that right now. Yeah. We're gonna leave it just kind of how it is. Turn on the smoke. That, oh, 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 by the way, is also gonna, gonna, going to kind of help us there as I choke on my words. Uh, all right, let me look at my notes here. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to begin creating our the whole streaking effect. And by streaking effect, I mean these colored streaks. You know uh, how like when you run, right. how, how that happens? This happens to me all the time. Oh, yeah, we run so fast. It happens to me all the time. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to create a new layer, new layer. And I'm going to call this layer streaks. We are going to, well, first of all, you want to make sure your foreground and background color are black and white. You can hit the letter D to do that. And then go filter, render, which as I said yesterday, render is just a fancy word for saying make stuff. So <laughs> Photoshop's going to make whatever you see here. Fire. Blank layer. Fire's actually, uh, flames are a cool, <laughs> a cool little render option. Because you We're going to go with clouds. Like she could be burning well, up that track. Exactly. She could be know, burning up. She could have to. smoke coming out of her ears, whatever you want. <laughs> so we apply just some regular clouds. And then we're going to go back into filter, not finder, filter. And we'll go render, difference clouds. Is interesting? Interesting what we have here. You did it twice. I did. So I did. You can't do a difference clouds on an empty layer. Oh. Okay. So I rendered regular clouds, which are these, oh, okay. and then I added to this not not the clouds, but the difference, the difference clouds. Difference clouds. So it gives you a little bit more of this striation, very almost like it feels more three dimensional, more poof and pop, uh, kind of kind of feel to it. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to use levels to really blow this image out and give us some interesting shapes. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control L, and I'm gonna bring the blacks up a little bit, but mainly I wanna really make sure I push the whites to kind of almost a solid white point. So something kind of like that might be what we're looking for. We may actually try this two ways now that I'm thinking about it and just go with whatever works best, but it'll be interesting to see it both ways. Now that we've done this, I am going to go filter, blur, motion blur and we're going to blur this probably like a thousand pixels and eh, a thousand's too much maybe like 200 or so something like that i'll hit okay and you can see eh, you know it's okay um we could probably add levels did i show you how i got the levels image adjustments levels i think i use the hotkey command mm -hmm. or control l levels and at this point we would need to boost the whites back up and make them you know kind of like solid white chunks of stuff but these look a bit like uh, gnocchi, uh, the Italian food. It's not particularly what we're going for here. We want something that looks a little bit more athletic and <laughs> sleek, things like that. Did you say gnocchi? Yeah, like, gnocchi. <laughs> That's the proper way to say it. Yeah, it Come probably on. is, but Come like on. it's very... Uh, you, you choke on the G. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. That's how you say <laughs> I it. I love it. <laughs> but it was a very specific reference. <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm, I'm Italian. What can I say? I love it. You know? Thank you. Uh, so we're going to awesome. go We're gonna go render clouds on a new layer here. We're going to call this streaks. <laughs> Two. I'm going to think that every time. <laughs> no. And we're going to go render difference clouds all the same so far. 
And uh, what I think I'm gonna do is I might try to motion blur this first and then apply levels. Let's just see how that works. So we'll go filter, we'll go blur. You're right, Ryan Ford, we'll cottage, cottage cheese mo right motion now. Motion blur, <laughs> cottage cheese, We're exactly. turning it in, in, we're making doki. <laughs> No key. No key. All right, so I just, I did a 300 pixel uh, motion blur, and then we're gonna go image, adjustments, and we will go with levels. And now I'm gonna bring the whites way up, bring the blacks up to really limit them. And uh, is there that much of a difference? You know, I wouldn't hate you if you said there isn't, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be good enough for what we're doing. What we have though, are two different sort of patterns that we can use. So let's go with our first pattern of streaks. I kind of I kind of sort of like them both, if I'm being honest. And I need to scale it downward. Again, this is probably a place I would use a smart object, but let's not belabor the point. Edit, free transform, scale this down, and we'll move it over, sort of behind her, maybe like that. And maybe in order to elongate the streaks a little more, hold down shift and just pull it out a little bit, sort of like that, it's kind of cool. Enter a return to commit the change. Now this obviously looks terrible. It looks like we're throwing a, a cheap. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I don't want to say a anything, cheap cowhide blanket but... <laughs> on her or something. So we're gonna go blend mode, screen, and we'll also go into our streaks. Double click, and we will blend if this layer. Just pull back on the blacks a little bit more. See, so I split. Hold down alter option, split the slider, just to really make sure we get rid of all of like the really black and dark gray fringy edges for these cloudy streaks that we uh, that we're doing right now. Now that we've done this, here's where the fun kind of begins. We're gonna sort of layer these streaks on, but we're gonna do it in a fun way. We're gonna go edit, retransform, we'll right click and choose warp. And now we'll just pull them into line with her. So I want them, because of the way that we're gonna sort of blend them to her, we want them to overlap her a bit, right? You see how all of this is overlapping her. We want that. That's workable extra stuff that's gonna allow us to blend nicely. So don't, don't worry about getting it perfect right now. It does not have to be perfect. And we can accentuate some stuff out here. Make it look like it's really being twisted, torn, and pulled in a bunch of different directions. Yeah, and as you manipulate that, a little shout out to the challenge, by the way. It's also mentioned in chat, but challenge is all about creating postcard, and we'll be reviewing those in about 20 minutes. Love it. So now that you have your first set of streaks that's kind of warped and, and twisted all over the place, I don't even know that I'm gonna use the streaks. I said we were gonna use the other streaks. I don't wanna do that because we can continue mixing things up and not have to reapply screen and the blend if and everything by Commander Control J duplicating these streaks and moving these down to like her feet. Also, because of the sort of the cloudy colorful nature of this, again, this is just where you sort of have to think ahead a little bit. You wanna to try to position the streaks so there's not something coming right out of her rear end because that's gonna be like the, mm. the butt of every joke if you're, <laughs> if you're catching my drift. Um, so what we would do is even though I'm lining this up this way, I'm thinking ahead about that and I know I'm gonna, when I mask it and adjust the way it looks, I'm gonna make sure it doesn't look like she has a cloud of smoke coming out of her, uh, her backside. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna hit Command or Control T to free transform this, right click, warp this, and here we're gonna pull this every which way, right? So it can, it can be coming up, it can be coming over. We wanna kind of align it with her feet down here. Having something coming right out of the heel of the shoe, that can be nice. Just making sure that there's overlap which I will be able to paint away. Other than that, there really is no right or wrong way to do this. So there we go, something like that. We'll commit that change. I want to duplicate this again, Commander Control J, because we want to also uh, create some that are coming off of her front leg and also her front arm that's so outstretched. So Commander Control T, I'm gonna just scale this down. Maybe just like that, all right. And I'll probably stretch it out a little bit, hold down shift and just pull it that way. Uh, another thing that might be valuable is shut off the others so we can really see what we're working on. Command or control T. And I'm gonna move my center anchor point. I'm gonna anchor it right in the palm of her hand and just rotate this whole thing downward. Maybe just kind of like that. I almost want it shooting out underneath her, her you know, cocked back arm, right? Almost like it's the exhaust of an airplane engine or something, even though of course, it would be on the other side of her body, but just for the, the composition purposes. Right click, we're gonna warp this as well. I wanna get rid of the big uh, loop-de-doo on the end of it as much as I'm able here, uh, just, just, to, just to keep things mixed up. I don't want it to look very obviously like we've just duplicated this a bunch of times. What is that icon right over there on your layer? That's, okay, so that icon, that's telling us that we have a layer style effect added to the layer. 
We're ha we have that because we perform that little blend if adjustment. That's all that's telling us. Does, See down here, double click on it, the shadow. It... Yeah, if you double click on it, it'll take you back to, here, I'll show oh, you. I Let did, me commit I guess this change. I've, I've never really used blend if, but that's You double okay, click gotcha. and boom, you're right back okay, to here. fascinating. So that's why, remember the shadow underneath the model, we did the blend if, boom, yeah. we have that icon. And the smoke, boom, we have that icon. So everywhere we've used blend if, you're gonna just have a little nice little indicator. It's a yeah. great way. Also mentally, if you're trying to remember how you did something, sometimes the blend if is one of those things we forget about um, and it's quite powerful. I'm gonna enter back in here because I wanna drop the bottom out of this a little bit. Something like that. Welcome, Sam. Good Actually, you know, you I'm gonna push it back that way because again, it's gonna sort of be on the back side of her. There we go, that's cool. Do we have uh, any runners in chat? Just we're curious. gonna duplicate this again, Commander Control J. And now this is gonna be for a front leg, Commander Control T. And I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna flip this a vertical oh, yeah. here. And right click, go warp. Do we have runners? Any runners out there, you know? You know how you're running and there's this like trail of you were once there? I've, I've tried to get runners into running, and... but I started to get like a sore knee and I got scared. So now I only run on the treadmill at the gym. That's the thing, like, I mean, it's a lot of repetitive motion you can get. Yeah, I feel like any, 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 yeah. any, like any Runner's World magazine has an article on how to right. stay injury free. Take care of degenerative yeah. knee conditions. So here we have, now she's the Snow Queen, right? It's kind of excessive, <laughs> but still, depending on the application, we haven't blended it yet. You would still want to blend it no matter what you're doing. But could you imagine a snowboarder going down the mountain and adding this kind of effect to them? It would be kind of cool, you know? Again, it depends on the photo of the, uh, the snowboarder and, and everything. But again, it's one of these uh, little effects that can be interesting. Now comes the process of blending. So I'm just shutting off all the streaks except one at a time. And we're back to our good friend, the layer mask. And here in the layer mask, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And let's grab the brush tool. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna make my brush big and fat again. Still, mm -hmm. hardness of zero. We want it to be very soft edges. We want this to kind of fade into our uh, subject. And a size of 100 is probably fine. Now, part of the interesting, see, we're just gonna get rid of that little streak, by the way. Part of the thing to look out for is you can really spend good time doing this blending. I'm not going to because we're under time constraint here. But if you were to say like, I want the streak to begin from this crease. So like the front side of the crease shouldn't have any streak on it. It should be a shadow. And the back side of the crease would have all that streak coming out of it, right? So I could do this and boom, that would come right out of the streak. I can paint back in exactly up to that, that sort of piece in her clothing. And you're gonna get really, really realistic looking streaky, colory effects. So over here, I'm gonna blend this in. Make sure I'm painting with black. Use the, the letter X to flip your foreground and background colors. I don't, I think uh, we have boom. like one or two runners. Okay. Which is cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, I don't discriminate against the runners. I'm just. Rob's a runner. I just don't know that it's for Some me. Some people are running out of jokes and lots of puns. Ashi's a runner. I like it. I like it. It's great cardio. I've yeah. heard I've heard boxers say that there's nothing like running to, to increase your endurance. It's a, it's a game changer. So I can't, yeah. I can't hate it. Who, who said, was it? Oh yeah, there we go. Sam Peterson says he runs sometimes, but he's never happy about it, which is always interesting because <laughs> if you see somebody running, they don't have a smile yeah, on Almost their face. never, yeah, I think you're right. Of course, no, Unless but anytime the, somebody's working out, they're not really smiling. You feel good afterwards. The, the, here's when you see people smiling when they run, at the end of a marathon, when they know they're finished running. Right, the pizza's but there. I'd say this, I'm, I'm happy when I'm done hitting myself with a frying pan too. <laughs> It's a bad joke, but you know, you get the point. I understand what you're I saying. Run, I, I, I run, I do this stuff. But uh, running can be, isn't All as right. exciting So as like here, this is a great example. Work in Photoshop. <laughs> this is a great example of where if you blend it right. This is really cool. The streak spot. looks like it's coming right off her calf, looks right? Really it's good. just a great transition and it, it just works. And something like the shoe, this by the way, is where you would adjust the hardness of your brush. There's really no natural fade point. You could pick either this line in the sneaker or mm -hmm. the actual top of the sneaker. So I would make my brush a lot smaller. Maybe I would right click and adjust the hardness. I'm not gonna adjust the hardness right now. And you could just paint right up to that point. Also, by the way, if you have a tablet, it makes this a little bit easier. So you can paint right up to that point. And it's just gonna make it look like that streakiness is coming like out of the inside of her shoe. Sorry about that, Paul, I almost backhanded you. Um, and there you go, you have that. 
I'll, I'll just soften up the bottom. I'm gonna really speed this up here. Just soften up the bottom along here. We wanna apply some color, see how we make this thing really come together for us. Let's go with the second set of streaks. And again, shutting off the other streaks as you go can, again, as we mentioned before, isolate work as much as possible. It tends to make it faster, easier, and just more fun. So here with her arm, where we don't really have a great cutoff point, focus on not letting the streak touch the shadow, right? Or fade it into the shadow. And that's gonna give us a great look, right? We're just coming right out of the highlight, right? It just works. And here where there's not much highlight on the wrist, see how much smaller I made the streak? Just push it way back. Up here with the hands, I'll let it kind of come out from between the fingertips as though it's, you know, a little, uh, I don't know, a little magic she's got coming out of her hands. Fade that up there. I'm just looking for hard edges, right? Like that hard, flat edge. Let's make that soft because it's all that's gonna blend together in the end. That's the key here, right? Boom, 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 boom. And we're, we're golden with that one. We got one more to, to do and we'll turn them all on and then we're gonna add some color. All right, let's add a mask here. And right off the bat, I'm gonna make it really big and I'm just gonna really soften the top edge where I can see a lot of work needs to happen. Again, we don't really need anything to come out of the front of her knee. All these streaks are gonna be coming out of the back of her leg. So just something that I'm, I'm thinking about here as I'm looking at this. I'm gonna zoom in, zoomed in a little too far, grab the brush, make it a smaller, and begin the fading process, right? Just like that, just like that. Get some of it off of the side of her thigh. You know, you want it to look as realistic as it should, considering the fact that it's a very unrealistic effect, right? I'm gonna flip, we're gonna paint, we're gonna make it really soft there. And there we have it, that's that. Let's turn on all the streakies. And now we've got this all mixed, crazy, combobulated thing. Now, it's looking cool. I mean, you could I, I adjust love the motion happening. It's right? Nice. Yeah, that's that's that warp, that warp action. I'm actually looking here at this one up here. The, I think it's this first one. I think I need to fade that back end. It looks a little bit too hard. So I'm gonna make sure I select the mask, grab the brush tool, make it really big, and just have that fade off a little bit into the sunset. Maybe down here, this as well too much, there we go, something like that. And what you can do is there's a lot of like clumping of the white here. So what I could do is that's that's this right here, or maybe it's this, it's that one big clump of white there in my original. So I'll go into that, make my brush a little smaller, and I'll just kind of, okay, it's not it's not even our effect, it's the uh, sky. It's, no, it's not the sky. What am I doing here? Oh, I, uh, I selected the wrong one. You know, that's my problem, I selected the wrong one. Yeah, there we go. Like being mindful of what you're, and being mindful that you select the layer mask. And not the layer. Right, exactly. That happens a lot. Yep. Hundred percent. Yeah. You want to make sure, and you know you've selected the layer mask because it has the white tick marks around it. So make, yeah, make sure you select the layer mask. Good point, Paul. I knew there's a reason just, they, they yeah. linked you up with me. Yeah. All right. I, so I, I know what not to do. <laughs> at That's this, all my advice. At this point, we need to add some color. We're almost finished with the composite. Uh, we need to add some color. We need to tidy things up, a little sharpness, some things like that and uh, we'll be ready to really take a closer look at this and have some fun with it. Yeah. And then maybe we can even get to some other fun stuff too if we have time. But uh, here's what we're gonna do. Remember Paul way back when mentioned the whole clipping mask, layer group and stuff like that. What you can do is we'll take our streaks by shift clicking them all, command or control G, and I'm gonna call this streaks, and we wanna colorize it. Now I will say, you may look at this and say, I want the these two streaks of color to be blue, and I want these two to be green. If you wanna do that, group them together and do what we're about to do. I'm gonna add a hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm gonna collapse the adjustments panel, and we're gonna change the color of these. So we're gonna say, hey, colorize, or watch this. They're solid white. So the first thing I need to do is reduce the lightness and boost saturation. You can see now they're red, but as you probably also see, the whole scene is red. Here's where that clipping mask um, becomes helpful. We can hold down our alter option key, we get our little clipping mask icon, clip it to just our streaks, and you have what you have. All right, so we'll take this, maybe I'll boost the, the lightness a little, eh, I don't wanna boost it too much, push the saturation way up. I'm gonna adjust the brightness a little bit. It looks like we're getting a little kind of fringy stuff. We can go in and play with that. Uh, and what I wanna do is I think I wanna make it kind of pink. So we're gonna go with a pink, or maybe, maybe like a, almost a Wendy's red, kind of like that. All right, is that pink, is that red? I think closer to pink than red, but heading in the direction of red, let's say that. We want it to be this high impact look, all right? And this is not really 
great for what we're doing. We want it to be a little bit more mixed up and interesting. So we're gonna take the gradient tool here. It's a black to white gradient that I'm using. Linear, straight across gradient. I'm gonna select the layer mask for the hue saturation adjustment. So not only are we clipping hue saturation to this layer group, but we're also gonna add to the layer mask here. I'm gonna drag upward. Let me just show you what that's gonna do. If we drag upward from like right here, we're gonna create a black to white gradient. In a layer mask, as we described yesterday, black hides. So everything down here is gonna be completely gone and it's gonna fade into existence at the top. So we're gonna drag this gradient into our mask. So I'm gonna start here at the bottom of my effect, drag up to the top of it, voila. We have a pink to white effect. Not necessarily what we want, but it's getting us to what we want. I'm gonna select the hue saturation layer again. Like I actually clicked on the icon there. Command or control J to duplicate it. We wanna reclip this to the stack. Command option G, that's control alt G on the PC, or of course, hover over that little you know, border and hit the, uh, hit the alt or option key and click. And now what I wanna do is change the color. So I'm gonna double click on hue saturation. And instead of the pink, I want kind of an orange. So I'm gonna drag the hue way back over here and I'll go with kind of an orange like that. Maybe not quite as dark, something sort of like that. And then to make this appear on the bottom, we're gonna select the layer mask and simply hit command or control I. So that's inverting our layer mask, putting the white on the bottom and black on top. So now we get this crazy effect where it's pink at the top, orange at the bottom. And I know what you're thinking, those of you who are a little more advanced, why not just use a gradient layer and overlay it? The primary reason is just, it's so fast and easy to come in and adjust hue saturation and watch how they blend together actually in the project, not on a gradient strip, because it can look different. And you may realize like with this pink, I actually want it to be lighter or darker or, or whatever it may be, all right? So we've got that. I'm gonna select the streaks, uh, whoop, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna select the streaks group here, and I think I need to blend if these a little bit more strongly to get rid of uh, some of that some of that the fringing. Halo. Oh, the fringing, yeah. Yeah, there's just that fringing. I'm gonna drag, and then I'm gonna drag, kinda like that, and double click to get into here. Let's do the same thing. We'll drag this way over. Let me pull this up behind it. And this is the kind of stuff that if you do at home, nobody sees it. It doesn't matter, it's just a quick little adjustment. It's something kind of like that. It's gonna mix it up a little bit for us. We're gonna, we're gonna be adding a lot to this, but at this point, here's what we've got. So we've got some colored like craziness coming off the back of her. It's almost like fiery, you could think. I mean, fiery, I guess, would be more red pink at the bottom to orange at the top. And you could, you could make that adjustment. We could, I mean, it could be as fast as just inverting both of the masks again, and we flip it. I don't, I don't like it as much as this, so I'm gonna uh, mm -hmm. keep this. So now that we have this, um, we're going to we're going to go ahead and kind of make it a little bit more explosive. We're going to blow it up with light. There's too much uh, there's too much blur on that right there. So I'm going to come into here with my brush, and I selected the wrong one. Did I select the wrong one? I did. It's the original one here. That original one. It's is... hard to tell. Do you? How do you? Because <laughs> I sometimes hold down. Is it control? The key? Control the control key with the and move then, tool, and then click on the. Yeah. Like sometimes you have to select. Yeah, you can get the marching ants. The only reason I, I'm not is because there's so much translucentness. I don't know. Like I might select. Mm. You know what I mean? Like this layer technically really? is underneath this curve that's happening. So if I had to click mm -hmm. right there, you know, I don't know. It's it's. You're probably right. And I'm, I just, I'm stuck in my ways, that kind, that kind of thing. I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff here at the bottom. There we go, all right. So now let's kind of, let's really make this blow up a little bit. Maybe we'll make it fade at the end a little bit. How do we do that? Well, we could make it fade on every individual mask or we could make our mask conglomeration even more complicated by adding a layer mask to our layer group. And now this is going to work on all four of these layers at the same time. So whatever layer, Whatever artwork is over here is just gonna fade right away, right? You see that? And maybe I'll, like I'll expand that a little bit. So you can see, that's the simple mask. I almost want you to like... I can shift click it. Have you tried uh, some blend modes on that whole folder? Uh, we could do that, we could. We could try, it might not we work, could try running a like screen. Just rolling over it. Yeah, but, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a little light. You'll see, you'll see kind of how everything is gonna come together in a little bit for us. Um, but, and it's the kind of thing too, we can always reduce opacity. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll play with it. And, and we can go back and try the blend modes as well once we add this, this brushing that I'm about to do. So let's create a new layer here and let's call this ah, flares, glows, something like that. 
And I'm gonna set the layer to the, uh, let's go with the color dodge blend mode. I, I sometimes I mix up linear, linear dodge and color dodge. And you can use just a large soft edge brush and maybe 300 uh, pixels will be good. Or you can go download some free brushes from anywhere on the internet and get some actual flare brushes, which is what I'm gonna use. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go with like this brush and it's giant. So I'm gonna make it maybe like 1500 pixels there across. There are some cool brushes out there. There's some really cool brushes out there. And uh, what I wanna do is hold down my alter option key and sample the pink. So for the top part of her, we're gonna go with this pink. And you can see the color dodge is gonna really help make this kind of, you know, I don't know, it's really gonna kind of light her up a little bit. I'm gonna right click it. again. I'm gonna choose another one. Less, less than five minutes for the challenge uh, submissions, by the way. That's all, for all good. this round. All good by me. So we've got some pinks, and then down here we'll grab the yellowy orange, which really, I think that, I think we need to crank up the, or reduce the brightness maybe a little bit, really get some more saturation into there. All right, we're gonna alter option click, just select one of those oranges. And of course, whoa, that's a, that's a bit much down there. The orange, we're gonna try that's a different sweet. brush. We're gonna try a different brush here. That's pretty Make, cool. Knock it down to about a thousand. There we go, something like that. Get that coming off her back leg. I love right it. There, kind of wherever she is. Uh, so now there. there's, there's no uh, particular dimension for the postcard. Um, but 1920 by 1080, 72 DPI is fine. That'll be full screen for us. Postcards are awesome. This is looking. I'm just. I'm is, looking at these this. little light bursts that you're adding. That that has to go away there, so I can see it's in this group of streaks. So I'm gonna go there, grab my brush tool, right click. I don't want the streaking light brush. Just a nice little little brush, and I'll just paint over that. Just fade it in a little bit. Yeah, so little streakies, the streaky light burst uh, things. Hopefully that makes sense, because Ashley's still kind of asking how you did that. Really, a lot is a lot of the. I mean, you have it set to color. It's a layer that's set to color dodge. Yes. And yep. Yeah, the just layer used a couple exactly. Colors. So I created a go. blank layer, Perfect. and it's set to color dodge. So when, if I set it back to normal blend mode, you're going to see it's just going to look like regular paint that's slapped on there. But when you add it, to, when you set it to color dodge, it makes it a little more, you know, it's boom. Makes it all pop. So we're going to duplicate it, Commander Control J, and now it's absurd, right? Uh, but what we're going to do is take, we're going to take the foreground color. Excuse me. We're going to set this to linear dodge add. Those of you that were here yesterday, this is how I create a lot of my flares. Double click on the top layer and uncheck transparency shapes layer. And then we're gonna begin here by reducing the fill opacity to around 20, 25. And the bottom, we're gonna reduce the overall opacity to maybe like, I don't know, 70-ish, something like that. Now what we wanna do is create some real, real streaky streaks. Uh, and so we're gonna select the streak folder, hold down shift and select all the way up here to the top hue saturation layer. And this is a great hotkey as well. Merge selected layers to a new layer. So it's gonna take these three layers, it's gonna copy them and kind of just flatten them into one layer. Command option or control alt and the letter E. So you can see we get these colored streaks off on their e own, just like that. Okay, so I just have to clarify. Yeah. On, a, on, a, on a Windows machine. Control, isn't it control alt E? Or is it different? Maybe it is. All I'm saying is, is you guys, some people have been saying Alt and Option. It's both on a Mac. Oh, okay. So you could just say one of the words, but I'm not Alt. 100% sure. Yeah. But either way, Control, it's, it's Option. Honestly, at this point, it's forced e. a habit with me. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yes. Command, Option, Control, that, it, Alt. And again, e. this is important because Oh, that's a not, really, uh, really useful thing. I use this all the time. It's yeah. really, really great. And it's not, it's, it's not a menu item. Uh, I don't think so, is no. It? I don't think so. So I just renamed that new layer Glow Streaks, and it looks, it looks too, there's too much going on now. That's fine. We're gonna select this, and we're gonna do a number of things with it. I am going to uh, go ahead and say Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, and we're gonna blur this maybe like 500. Let's try 500, something like that. And we'll set this, let's see what overlay looks like now. Color Dodge, that's kind of interesting. Color Dodge might be a little bit too bright underneath everything, let me move it up. Let me shut off the layers underneath. All right, so we've got that. There's what we're adding, is just that kind of streaking effect. I'm gonna duplicate this, Commander Control J, and I'm gonna go Filter, Blur, and we're gonna apply another motion blur to the previously motion blurred artwork. Motion blur. Also a 500, hit OK. And there we go, something like that. It's really going kind of wild. Now, you may be still focused 
on this, kind of looking chunky, mm -hmm. rightfully so. We're gonna get back to it. Well, we're getting back to it right now. We're gonna go into these layers and I'm gonna unlink them from their layer mask, right? You see that there's a little link icon between a layer and its layer mask. I unlink them all. We're gonna select each layer, layer by layer, and go filter, blur, motion blur. And what I'm gonna do here is keep an eye, like that's way too much. So we're gonna reduce this. Let's try 100, something like that. Just tell me, Paul, when, when we gotta jump to something else. To maybe 200, I think I like 200. And then all I have to do is select each other layer and to apply a filter motion blur, it's the hotkey Command or Control F. So Command or Control F, Command or Control F, Command or Control F. So now she has much more sort of natural looking streaks shooting out of her as well as all this other stuff we've added. And you can take these glowing streaks, maybe push them out in front of her a little bit if you want. Command or Control T and stretch them back a little bit. You can do a lot with them. You can compress them down a little. You know, this the sky is the limit and mm -hmm. uh, nobody's holding you back. You're not Icarus, fly high, your wings won't melt. Mm -hmm. All right? So we've got it. this. Uh, can I throw two adjustment layers on before we go to the next yeah. thing? Okay. Oh, well, this is the deadline, right? We're talking about, so we got, we still yeah. have a little bit of time. Okay. Um, we're gonna go adjustments. I have something else I wanna show you guys. So it's don't, it's stick around. It's a little old school Photoshop. At least for me, it's old school Into Photoshop. It. Yeah. So works. I'm gonna apply a curves adjustment layer. I know I said I wouldn't do curves, but I can't resist. I can't let you go without it, at <laughs> least showing you a little bit about curves. So what we can do here is with curves, you pull down, you click to add a point, you pull down, it darkens an image, you click and pull up, it brightens an image. It can brighten it a lot. You pull down, down near here, it darkens the darker parts of the image first. You pull down up here, it darkens the brighter parts of the image first. And the same thing goes for uh, brightening the image as well. So we can increase contrast with curves by creating what's called an S curve. That's where we add and enhance the, a little bit of the darkness, and then up here in the brights, we pull a little bit more into the brights. Look at how that just adds so much contrast. Now that's that's really ugly contrast. So I'm gonna hit the reset arrow. What I wanna do is drag this point. It's the black point, not the little arrow. Well, you could drag the little arrow on the bottom. What am I saying? I'm gonna drag it over to introduce a little bit of contrast. And then I'm gonna pull down on the white point to just flatten some of those really intense highlights. So there's before, there's after. We're beginning uh, the toning process here. So I kind of like that. Uh, we're also going to go and, so well, we got our curves. I think I want to add a LUT as well here. And actually there's one more oh, thing. Oh, I love it. There's one more thing if we can do it that I'll do. I'm going to go with the edgy amber and you can see, whoa, we, what have we just done? We've just changed everything. Yes, we have. And we're going to set this to the soft light uh, blend mode. So there's before, there's after. This is way, way, way too powerful. So drop down your opacity and just reduce it. You know, 35, 40, 50%, something like that. That's gonna do a lot to change things up for us. You could throw a color balance adjustment on there if you wanna say, look, I wanna make my scene really steely, clinical, harsh, and, and blue. Uh, we could do that, very cold, right? If it's something in the snowy mountains, maybe you want it to appear very cold. If you're on the Serengeti or in Tanzania on a safari, you want it to be very warm, a lot of yellows, a lot of reds, things like that uh, can always uh, be helpful and useful. Uh, one thing that I'm seeing we forgot here is with all of this glowing action, there should be some light reflected onto the ground. Let me just show you how to do that real quick. Very, very easy. Uh, we wanna do this here underneath her because this should be probably above the shadow but underneath our model. So we're gonna create a new layer. Let me select the shadow layer if my, my hand decides to work. And we're gonna call this uh, reflected glow. Something sort of like that. I'm gonna grab my ellip uh, elliptical marquee tool. I'm just gonna drag I don't know, just an ellipse out into the middle of the document. And I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool right here. And by the way, my eyedropper tool is set to sample all layers. That's gonna allow me to grab like this yellow here. And I'm gonna fill my ellipse with it using the hotkey, option, delete, that's option, back, uh, option, delete on the Mac, alt, backspace on the PC, and then select, deselect. And what we'll do here is go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and 100 is a bit much, maybe like 20, that's good. And then we'll go filter, blur, motion blur, and 200, maybe we'll make it a little more. Let's go like 600, hit okay. And we're now gonna take this and compress it a little bit more. See how it kind of covers, you know, from all the way here in the foreground to basically back to the fence, probably a bit much. So we're gonna hit Command or Control T, I'm gonna hold down Shift. I'm just gonna bump it back a little bit. Maybe bump it up a little as well. I mean, if there's that much glowing, you might think everything, everything around you is gonna be lit up, but I'm gonna go ahead and commit the change. 
and maybe move it backward a little bit, just my move tool, and then try some blend modes. Does screen look right? Does color dodge look right? Does overlay look right? Soft to light, I kind of think, I kind of like And what are you overlay. trying to do here? Like what's, is you just adding? This is, what is when it? you have that much explosive oh, glowing coming off the back gotcha. of you, there should be some light on the Spillage ground. Spillage on that, okay, exactly. gotcha, good point. So that's, uh, that's Jose, what we're all, about. all you did is just made a selection and filled it with yellow. And now you, it did yep, more than just it, that, but that's I blurred how you it, got the initial. And then I, yep, motion blurred it. Yeah. Uh, so with this, and you know, I look at this, it's a little too yellow, it should be more orange. The perfect time to just go image, adjustments, new saturation, and we'll shift the hue a little bit and make it a little bit more red-orange, make it a little darker maybe. Eh, no, I actually don't wanna make it darker. A little more red-orange, it should be back this way. I went the wrong way. Saturate it a little bit more, something like that. Just cast that light on the ground. Again, you can blend if this and really get it nicely blended in there. The mm. point is you want something just to kind of indicate, hey, we got something going on down here. Um, and then maybe last but not least, we'll just throw a little sharpening on this. So merge all layers to a new layer. Control, Shift, Alt, E. That's Command, Shift, Option, E on the Mac. We're gonna make this black and white. Image, uh, adjustments, desaturate. And then like we did yesterday, filter, other, high pass. And I'll go with, let's just go with 3.5 and set it to something like a soft light blend mode. And it just adds a little kick of sharpness there. Yeah, into you kind of went into more depth with that like yesterday, which was yeah, awesome. Yeah, exactly. Just like a very, very cool, general man. global sharpening type effect. So she's almost like a superhero. Yeah, and then again, you know, take take your time with it. I would probably make the colors a little more muted. Um, I would probably change the colors in the sky a little bit in the background. Uh, mm -hmm. I would clean up the fence a little bit more. I would perfect the the glowing reflected light on the ground. There's all that stuff that you do when you're not doing like an Adobe live stream, you know, <laughs> things like that. That's awesome. Yep. So that's very cool, man. Jose Gonzalez. I'm actually tweaking an image in Photoshop as you display these tools. That's awesome, mm -hmm. man. Very cool. And I'm really happy that people got involved with the uh, the challenge. You can check out the challenge tab. You can see the clock says 000. That means it's time to review. We'll review four of them, just so you know. And just so you know where, how to get to that, right over here, it's this tab right over here. Woo box is what we're checking out. Woo box. Yeah, a little. Uh, Diogo, oh, and yeah. so the whole goal was to make a postcard. Diogo Sampaio. Sampaio. Okay. So wait for this to load. It looks know. like it looks like he has something happening at the bottom of the frame. And let me just check. Okay, cool. Like he flipped the city over. Mm. Right. It's almost like it's been mirrored. That's pretty cool. Kind of dig it. I, I like it because think of, a, of this as like a printed postcard. You might grab yep. it from both sides and it's yeah, kind you of flip fun. it either way. I actually think it's a different shot of the city on the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, that's really yeah. interesting. Diego, I dig it. I like it. I dig it. Good job, Diego. You did a great job. Design master. I love the. I love the, their name. That's really cool. Uh, J.K. Bridge, JK Bridge in Brasilia, Brazil. Oh, oh Brazilia. way cool. That's the capital of Brazil, by the way. Yeah. They built the town in the shape of an airplane, if you look at it overhead. Oh, really? It's like the fuselage and the wings where the government buildings are. And my brother married a girl from Brazil. It's not like I'm some Brazilian savant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a super cool looking bridge. Uh, it um, really, it's I a like work the colors. of art. Yeah, I like, I like what you did here. That's amazing. Brasilia. Very into it. And now we want to go there. Uh, Christopher de la Guarda, Guardia. De la Guardia. De la Guardia. And they named an airport after him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is like this very, is really um, cool. like if Picasso did landscapes or st I guess more still life isn't really a landscape, but that's, I, that's interesting. I love this style. I yeah. love these sharp shadows. That's very cool. And... You could sell this in like every artsy coffee shop gallery, mm -hmm. and probably the touristy gift shops as well for your town. They're very cool. I like the treatment of the photo, or unless it's all a painting, in which case, even more impressive. Um, I like that but it's kind of hard to tell. <coughs> yeah, no, Reminds I agree. me of like Into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man, have you seen that yet? No, I've right, never watched a Spider-Man movie in my life. Never watched Star Wars either. Okay, that's you're pretty proud of the fact that you haven't. Huh. You, and it's you're you're at a point now where you can't watch them because you've gone so far in your life without seeing them, you just can't watch them. Exactly. 
Uh, and I wish you were around later when Voodoo Val is on because you need to tell her. That I, I've told her not. that. She's oh, okay. yelled at me about it before. Oh, good for you. Because she'll start naming like Star Wars characters. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know who's what. And you thunderstorm. It, this is cool. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> trying to figure out what, oh, Houston. I'm like, what city is I that? love There's this. Houston, Houston, I'm Texas. sorry, I clicked on it and Matt Koistra. It's like the... This is awesome. It's the sort of uh, <laughs> cynics look at Houston, right? Thunderstorms, <laughs> hot, at haze, hot. ongoing crime. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom. Ongoing crime, <laughs> haze, can't breathe, thunderstorms. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, this is killing me. And I, I can't tell if you took it through a window. I'm assuming it's a window texture you have up there representing the thunderstorms because it looks like mm. like somebody, you know, you, you add glycerin to water and you flick it at glass and you yeah. take a picture of it and get that perfect, uh, that perfect raindrop texture effect. That's really yeah. cool. That's really, too, really cool. Too many good things to say about this one. It's very nice. It's yeah. So many levels. Super. Yeah, great job. Man, everybody did fantastic. Those are our entries, by the way, reviewed for. We'll review more in the next segment. As the day, as so, the day goes on. Yeah, definitely. Really you'll, have, you'll have more time if you're working on yours. So you can submit them for the later streams. Mm -hmm. Cool. I was thinking we'd want to travel to most of these places until we looked at this one. I'm like... I would actually love to go to Houston. It's, it's yeah. a major city that I've never even taken a connecting flight into. You would think, how? How has that happened? Yeah, you get it through Houston and a lot of times if you're going to South if, America. Well, depending on where you live. If you fly Sorry. Delta, I think Delta has a Houston hub. Minneapolis yeah. and, and Houston. Um, United. I feel like when I fly a lot of United, I end up United going always to goes Houston. through Chicago for me. Yeah, and that's why I was thinking, like, uh, since I live in Denver. Hey, guys, this is your daily airline talk, by so, the way. <laughs> Sorry, this is very <laughs> random. But really into <laughs> it. Uh, Jose, I couldn't agree more. Stellar work there, bud. I like the postcard. I even threw a border around it, too, which is cool. Yeah, everything works from the, from the color to the tint. Like, everything works with this. Even this little, like you're saying, this accent. Yeah. Very nice. I agree. And he's got the long horn. I would say almost like, if anything, it doesn't even need city within 24 hours. This is inconsequential. Yeah. It in could be opinion. like, you could do that like classic cliche uh, postcard script font. Yeah. We're missing you or something, yeah. you know, some message or, like, or something. You know, wonderful Houston or like but some. Why do you use the University of Texas burnt orange as the color of the Houston, Texas text? Shouldn't that be for Austin or something? You should have the oh. red for University of Houston, the Cougars. Oh, you not, know, I'm not even a fan. You, you know your I'm not stuff. even a fan, but I'm just saying that's the color of the Longhorns, and I feel like there's probably rivalries across you, the state. Do you watch the sports? You not the really, but I'm, you more know the I'm more interested in how the teams are built, so I'm always kind of keeping an eye on who's doing what. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, very into yeah, it. I so did. that's all. We'll kind of, I guess, switch back to your screen. We still yep. have time. Yeah, yeah, no, I got something else I want to show. So I want to... Um, I want to show you guys like something. I, I did a tutorial on this maybe like two years ago, and I almost didn't do the video because it's. I don't know how else to classify it other than like old school Photoshop. It's just something that like back in 2005, 2006, I would do when I was just getting started because I thought it was really cool. And in fact, I haven't done it in a really long time. Hmm. But it's something that when I made the video, the response was so great. And it's something that anybody can do with a photo, with just a bunch of colors you slap on a screen, whatever. It's just, I guess it's kind of cool. I, I sort of took it for granted, I suppose. I'm gonna save my document here. I guess I should have done this, uh, Paul. We were, <laughs> I'm so sorry. We were... I didn't recommend it <laughs> no, either. No, 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 that's fine. Nobody caught it'll, it. It'll save fast. You named your layers and everything. Oh, it's saved, so we're good. I actually think the one we did almost looks better than the one that I did. Oh, I, I left out one thing. Let me show you one quick thing before we do the, the cool effect. I, I like how there's more like s trails of light behind her right. with your one you did today. One other thing I want to show you with this before we go. So, she's running. She's, I almost said streaking, but she has streaks coming out of her while she is running. <laughs> Um, we're she going is to. Yeah, it's appropriate. <laughs> we're gonna take. Yeah, yeah. This is the the legal way to street. Yeah, this is. We're gonna uh, we're gonna take all these layers that are underneath her, behind her, that form the background, the scene into which she's been placed, as well as the modifications we've made. All these. We're gonna group them by hitting Command or Control G, which I can't do, of course, because my background layer is locked. So we'll hit the little lock icon and hold down shift and select all those layers again. Command or Control G to group them up. Select that and we'll call this background, all right? Now what we're gonna do is duplicate 
this entire layer group. And you can do that using that same uh, duplicate layer hotkey, command or control J. See that, got two of them. Boom. I'm just gonna shut off the back one. And the top layer, I'm gonna right click on it and just say, hey, uh, merge the group. And there's our entire background, bam. Flattened to one frame with a shoe, a toe. <laughs> All right, so now that we have that, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go filter, blur, motion blur. And we'll blur it, not, not 500, maybe like 10. Something like that. We're just going straight across. Okay. Maybe a little bit more, maybe 20. Just enough to give it. You can keep playing with it until you get just enough movement to make it really look like she's running along there. And of course, because I have the original background, I can just turn it on there and it fills in, see how the edges with a motion blur, sometimes you get this kind of edge action. Um, mm -hmm. And if I just turn on the background layer, it fills that stuff in. And maybe there's a little bit over here I could clean up. But you can see there's without the motion, there's with the motion. So we just, I don't know, we gussy it up a little bit. We make it a little interesting. I'm gonna save that, we're gonna close it. I'm gonna get out of this before I uh, don't have time to show you this next thing I wanna show you. So I'm just gonna look here for kind of a colorful photo. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, I'm not looking for a specific photo, just kind of a specific kind of photo, something with a lot of color. Um, let's maybe go with this, Hong Kong city streets. That's colorful. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to... This is... I'm she gonna, just ran down these streets. I'm going to... Yeah, right. There's a bunch of them Exactly. Running. She's There's a marathon of the streakers. <laughs> uh, I'm going to... We're going to we're gonna delve into a couple smart objects here because we're at the end, and this is bonus material as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to right-click on the background layer and go here, convert to smart object. There we go. And now that I've done that, I am going to say, hey, filter, uh, noise. Uh, I'm sorry, not noise. Pixelate. And we're going to go mezzotint. Is that the way you pronounce that? Mesotint. Me mesotint, 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 something yeah. like that. I'm gonna say mesotint, and we're gonna do it with the coarse dots. Look at that, that's a fine painting right there. Uh, now what I'm going to do is say filter, blur. Uh, I'm gonna go with a radial blur, which kind of blurs circularly. I'm gonna say zoom, not, not, not radial blur. Uh, and with the, with the zoom here, I'm gonna make it 100, and I'll hit okay and give Photoshop a second because this is this is heavy lifting here. And then I'm gonna hit Command or Control F or just say Filter Radial Blur to perform the Radial Blur again. Here it is, you wanna do the Radial, bl radial Blur? Second time. Um, I do, and I think I might go with a higher quality. Let's go Best and hit OK. Just kind of something like that. Give it a second, Photoshop's gonna think and process and and do, do its thing and have its fun and all of that. Dink, 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 dink. Uh, we, yeah. could, we could look at a postcard right now, but by the time it switches, we'll, we'll be done with a radio blur. Uh, this is the difference between... Oh, by the way, so Chris is in chat, by the way. Chris, you did a great job. This was his, by the way. I think this one was really... Oh, so I didn't hear what they really said awesome. about my entry. I mean, we said it was funny. We'd, this one was awesome. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. This, yeah. yeah. This is very cool. I mean, this is like, I think we have had some good entries, and we yeah. couldn't say enough nice things That's about very this cool. one as well. It's very cool. So you can kind of see the difference in the radial blur. The high quality radial blur really takes things to another level. I mean, that's oh, look at that. like so smooth Gorgeous. looking, right? But that's not it. We, we don't, we don't uh, stop there. We're going to go filter, uh, distort, twirl. And I'm gonna set the angle. Let's go like 100 degrees for the angle. And I will hit OK. And again, give that a second. There we go. Um, now we're going to uh, duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. And because it's a smart object, I can hit the layer drop down, double click on my twirl, and I want to reverse the twirl. So I really should explain this here. I will. Once we do the reverse twirl, I'll, I'll give you a. I like just heads up. not knowing where, where it's where it's going. <laughs> I like I like this. It's going somewhere. You'll see. <laughs> And yeah, we have about uh, yeah five minutes. We'll have uh, Jesus. We'll be up next. Perfect. All right. So here we're gonna go negative one hundred, and it's gonna perform the this same is, kind of twist. That was almost her opposite. view. The first shot was her. Yeah, view right. This is what running. she sees when she's running down the street. Everything's. <laughs> uh, so what's happening here with the smart object is, when you add a filter to a smart object layer, you get this little filter icon. Whoops, I didn't mean to click it. You get the little filter icon that appears and the little arrow. You can click the arrow and you can edit any of the filters you applied. So like with that motion blur that we added to the background right there at the end of the, the image that we were just working on, if I converted my background image 
that we, we merged everything, remember the whole layer group. If I convert that to a smart object, I apply, let's say a 10, 10 pixel motion blur and I look at it and I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know, 10 pixels isn't enough. I can come in here and I'd be able to double click on the motion blur and bump it up to 30 or 50 or even reduce it. That's really where it's valuable when you need to reduce something. All right, so we've got our twirl. We've got twirl one way, uh, twirl the other. And we're going to, how am I gonna do this here? I'm gonna merge both of these layers to a new layer. So I'm gonna do a command shift option E, that's control shift alt E. We've got a non-smart object up here. And what I wanna do is I wanna, oh, I'm sorry, I did this wrong. I wanna begin cycling through the blend modes here. So I'm starting to kinda see like, oh, with light and look at that, we kind of an interesting effect. There are a lot of different colors, right? We could go screen, that's interesting. Color dodge, it's blowing out some of those highlights, right? Blowing out the highlights. Overlay, lighter color actually, that was very interesting. Oh. Very subtle, see how much detail mm. you can almost, you can yeah. feel like you can like grab all those fibers, like they're muscle fibers in an anatomy or something. Mm -hmm. Very cool, I actually like that a lot. That's better than light and lighter color. And this is when she starts through. going so fast, she starts to time right, and travel. Exactly. She starts to see different colors. Yeah. There we go, lighter color. She I think starts gonna, to break into other <laughs> dimensions at this point. I think we're gonna roll with lighter color there. And then what we'll do is, in order to preserve this, because right now it's these two layers interacting with one another, we're gonna merge these to a new layer and do that same thing that I just did a second ago. Command shift option E, that's control shift alt E on uh, the PC, and we've got our new layer up there. Now what we'll do is we will go adjustments. I guess I'll, let's try to add a black and white adjustment layer here. That's kind of, whoops, that's kind of cool in its own right, right? And again, you can go in here and say, look, make the yellows really bright or really dark. You can really change almost the way the texture looks and therefore would feel. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna say black and white. Um, Let's, let's try setting this to multiply, see what that does. Eh, I don't know. I don't know that I like it as much. It kind of takes away that really snappy, really vibrant color we have. Mm -hmm. Let's instead try to bring out a little bit more detail. We'll just take this layer that we just merged up. We'll do that same high pass trick. Image, adjustments, <clears throat> desaturate, and then filter, other high pass, and I wanna kinda of zoom into like 100% so I can really see mm. all the detail that's being pulled out. Should I do one? Should I bump it up to like two? Maybe to three, I think I'll go to three. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna set my high pass, I'll name this high pass sharpen. Uh... And I'm gonna set this to overlay soft light. You can see the difference, wow. overlay's a little crunchier. Okay. Soft light's a little, um, a little smoother. There's before, there's after, something like that. And we can Command or Control J and duplicate that Give just to double up the effect, right? It. Something like that. That's kind of interesting. I kind of dig that. Um, and then, then it's a matter of just play with some colors. So let's add a color balance adjustment layer here and start seeing, we've got a lot of blues, reds, orange. So what if we- Tim is wondering how you figure this stuff out. Put, and just, and what, what were you on? I was a very bored on. child. Oh, I, I No, I, honest talk, I've never I've never used a, any any sort of substance like that in my life. So it's uh, not like I was just sitting there like, let's make something that's great yeah, to look at, uh, man. Let's make the, I'm um, like a cool I've never even used any of that stuff. It. It's just, you know, you're 16 or 17 years old and you're just sitting in your bedroom not thinking about doing something productive with your life. And uh, what the, what it was Albert Einstein that said, creativity is the re the residue of time wasted. So this is that kind of working itself out. I tried telling that to my boss and it didn't go over too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, mo modern workplaces are still there. Yeah, be careful where you use that quote. They're a little yes, late to the, <laughs> <laughs> they're a little late to the party when it comes to some of that. It's true though, that's so true. Oh, and especially in the field that we, that we work in. If you can't relax, you're never gonna be as creative as you should be. Uh, so we're gonna go blue, let's go purple. And I'm just working some of these colors into the shadows. There's before color balance, look at how like, bland that looks. Remember how exciting it was when you uh -huh. first saw it? Now with color balance, you're like, whoa, this is even cooler. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's, 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 you know, sometimes creativity is not knowing where to go, but I where to it. stop. Cause you didn't even know what photo to pick. Uh, exactly. And, it doesn't and, even and look like a every photo. single photo is going to be different. Mm -hmm. The, the one thing that I found really, um, is nice for this particular effect is uh, uh, the more colorful the photo, the better. Now you can see probably because we use light, lighter color, there, there are a couple little jaggies that I would clean up. 
Maybe the screen blend mode would be a little bit better. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The light, the lighter color was just something off the cuff I just improvised with. Um, but yeah, I mean, just look at the smoothness. Tell me that does not just make you want to jump into your computer screen. You know what I mean? Look at how that all just fades together. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm into it too, man. So I think everybody does. Like Kevin says, boom. You did a great job, boom. man. This is super boom. fun to see. Boom. I think it's been fantastic. <laughs> and thank you for all the submissions so far. We have Jesus Ramirez coming up next. And we get you back tomorrow for day three. Absolutely. All these are fantastic. So Love it. Thanks so much, everybody. Stick around. Thank you, Nathaniel. You're the man. Hey, man. I'm, I'm, ha I'm thrilled to be here. We're happy to have you. Sleep is the cousin of death, says Jan Erickson. <laughs> or Jan Eric, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're the man. Cool. Be right back in a sec. Thank you.